All right, everyone, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hotfix. That means every two weeks, every other week. So, welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful time at SGDQ, Summer Games Done Quick. And speaking of which, Summer Games Done Quick has wrapped up. If you'd like to check out any of the runs from that, uh, you can find it on the playlist at Games Done Quick's YouTube channel. I guess you can find that on, uh, you know, youtube.com slash games done quick. A lot of fun runs, and as always, we love the horror block here at Speedruns in the Crypt. It's one of my favorite blocks. A lot of fun games this time, but with every marathon, you can always want a little bit more. You sort of just, there's a lot of good games that you sort of just miss. Uh, today, I'm going to be uh, bringing you four of the games that were not able to be brought from the marathon, either because uh, they're on backup or for other reasons. Um, and that being said, here will be the runs tonight. Just to kind of go over them, we'll be having Bloodstained, uh, Curse of the Night, uh, Resident Evil 7, uh, Clock Tower 3, and Dead Rising 2. We'll talk about each of the runners and the games. Uh, but to open things up, uh, one of my favorite people and one of my favorite runs, uh, we're going to be doing uh, Bloodstained, Curse of the Night, featuring the Blacktastic. So take it away. Yo, it was a curse of the uh, moon, I just realized. <laughs> Do you want me to whip out Ritual of the Night? I mean, like, the theme is... Uh, the theme is games that, that couldn't be shown off at Summer Games Done Quick, so I'm assuming Curse of the Moon is it. But, I mean, like, if you want a Zangetsu run, a little, a little extra, and be sure to invite me back for a little bit of Zangetsu action. But, hello, I might everybody. need to. <laughs> My name is The Blacktastic. You can always just call me Bobby. Welcome to Bloodstain. Curse of the Moon, this is an indie title carefully crafted to be a spiritual successor to retro Castlevania games, kind of like Castlevania 3 even, so uh, throughout the game we'll be picking up a handful of party members, all with their own weapons, uh, physical attributes and feats, items that you can pick up, even color palettes, so. Uh, let's set up the ultimate category in, in the veteran style. And time's gonna be on movement, so don't worry, I will count you down. But let's learn a little bit of lore about, you know, this spiritual successor. So there was once a man who had been given the moon's curse by demons. That man was Zangetsu, and that's pretty much all you need to know. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Because it does start on movement, but. All right. <laughs> Uh, but for uh, now, we do have the main protagonist, Zangetsu, like we were talking about a little bit earlier. And we're, we're moving pretty darn fast with them. So the ultimate category outfits them with several, uh, like a slew of abilities. They're, you're originally called Soul Arts. Uh, there are three that you can grab in a game. They, they give you access to a dash, a double jump, and an aerial slash. Makes it really you know, easier to hit people like air to air or air to, air, air to ground. But exclusively to ultimate mode, there is this charge slash that deals an immense amount of damage uh, on top of having a huge area of attack, you see. So for a lot of the boss quick kills and just enemy clearing in general, you're going to be seeing a lot of this attack. Uh, it's almost like a short range, like Buster Charge. I mean, like it's, it, it almost feels like a Mega Man now that we're t we're talking about it. But uh, we'll get a little bit into like why it might be like that uh, in just a minute. But look at that parallax scrolling. This game is only on sale for like only five dollars right now for the Steam Summer Sale, by the way. It's out on every contemporary console, but for five dollars, I think I think that that's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty darn good deal. I think so. So uh, let's execute this segment. So this charge slash of ours deals three times as much damage as a regular swing. And that's only if it hits once. So like there's this trick of moving quickly into the enemy's hurt box uh, to reproc the hits. So while we're waiting for the big, big charge slash to charge, uh, we're gonna reposition ourselves, see if we can get that double stack. And we're getting the nice double stacks. Hopefully we don't get hit by the head. We can reposition ourselves with the double. And while it's charging up, we can actually use our sub-weapon points instead. I mean, yeah, our sub-weapon for the ball and chain. It still deals a whole bunch of damage as well. And we want to make sure our weapon points, you know, used to uh, do our, you know, our items. We're basically like hearts in Castlevania games. We want to make sure that's at a nat zero at the end of every stage so that um, the game doesn't spend the time counting it down and overflowing into, like, your score. Like, it's just, it, it is basically a, pretty much like a score thing. Huh. But yeah, like you saw a little bit there, bosses will usually perform a last-ditch effort attack against you, but for a game like this, uh, it doesn't really do much. It's just only for, like, no-hit bonuses. 
right, we picked up Miriam. You might recognize Miriam as the protagonist to, uh, you know, Symphony, uh, not Symphony, Ritual of the Night. See, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up the, the titles like Ack over here. They get you. Ritual I, I, I of I read the Moon. Ritual of the Moon, and I thought, wait, Ritual and Moon don't go together. It must be Curse of the Night. I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> You know what the funnier part is, by the way, while you're doing this stage? <laughs> so for anyone who watches Speedruns of the Crypt or just knows either the Black Tastic or me, um, I actually met Bobby during a run of this uh, that Starwind did in a few GDUs back. That's how I actually mm -hmm. met him. So I think it is funny as well, because I, I also run this game. I should know this. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of horror and horror adjacent, but like there's also two different like uh, titles, you know, Ritual of the Night and Curse of the Moon. I saw someone in the chat asking a little bit earlier, like, is this the same like story? No, it actually is not. So um, when this game was uh, funded for, to, you know, uh, like, like to be like a Kickstarter incentive for uh, Ritual of the Night. Hold on. Tight jump here. Cool. Uh, yeah, it was it was initially you know announced as a stretch goal. They were going to plan it as like a prequel to Ritual of the Night, but they actually ended up just making it like its own different thing, which I actually love more since you can like you know you can kind of like use that to further distinguish the two universes. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's just like a different like universe because like especially in Curse of the Moon 2, there are like some choice characters that are present in Ritual of the Night that are like definitely not a good guy. So I don't want to spoil too much because you, know, you should definitely be playing this. We didn't get really much into Miriam, but uh, Miriam can jump high and slide across these really small crevices. It's really, really good. She also has one of the most powerful sub weapons in the game, the BAA. The BFA, a.k.a. the big old axe. And you're going to be seeing a lot of this axe a little bit uh, in the a little bit later with the bosses. But this is actually like the most difficult quick kill in the game. So let's see if I can pull it off. Every hit is deliberate. One, two, three, dunk. There we go. Ooh. Very nice. There we go. So so in ultimate mode, the bosses are like a lot harder. They move faster even, and uh, they have a lot more HP. So like every single swipe that we did right there is incredibly deliberate because uh, we would have to waste about 7 to 12 seconds for a backup otherwise. So it's really good. Good fight. <laughs> Also, I want to mention, since uh, I was actually watching your stream before you, while you're practicing for this, uh, you actually got a new world record in this category, didn't you? Literally two hours before the start of this broadcast. <laughs> it's just good timing, what can we say? It's incredibly good timing. So yeah, we went we went from a 22-16 to a 22-11, but this game's still having stuff getting, uh, getting optimized and getting found out about it, so I would definitely recommend anyone here that's inquiring about this game to pick it up. There's a whole bunch of characters to play as. There's a whole bunch of modes. That, like, like we, we've seen, we've seen ultimate mode at GDQ before, just not in like the any percent, any percent. Uh, we've seen nightmare mode as well. We've seen again Starwind's low percent, which is really, really cool. Because like with any different route, like you see way different parts of the game. Like especially for like low percent or like normal or anything like that. So it's just like really cool. So like teamwork makes the dream work. So uh, here's a really good example right here. The Frost Caliber freezes this big old foe. We can use him as a platform to skip an entire segment of the set of the stage. <laughs> so uh, like, like like little things like that like are really really uh, easy to come by. And you know just experiment. So we want to make sure that we're topped up on our uh, HP right here because we're going through a, crush a crusher room which we're going to be taking a couple of damage boosts from. Um, and they do about 4 HP of damage. But again, with, uh, you know, swapping in and out, we can actually share the damage throughout their life bars, which is really cool. So with the Crushers, I, I well, you know, I have a moment to chill. I actually have a question. I noticed uh, usually swap to Miriam and then jump over the door to Zengetsu. Why do you do that instead of just opening the so, door? So, yeah, that, that's the door skip. In any percent ultimate, doors do not exist except for the mid-boss doors and the final boss door. Because if you were to open a door to go to a different screen, like the animation would actually just, like take about like five seconds so you're saving about roughly five seconds every door transition by doing that so it's it's, it's pretty exclusive to ultimate mode because you're not supposed to have those abilities with zangetsu right oh, hold on hold on oh i can explain this five bit if you would want 
<laughs> this, this fight has gone completely oh, off God. the rails. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, to kind of get explain what's going on for anyone in chat, um, normally what you want to do is you want to freeze the head, because whenever you freeze it, it does double damage to whoever hit comes after that. Um, mm. So as we have the BFA hitting the head, you're doing just a metric ton of damage uh, as a result. There is a quick kill. Unfortunately, um, sometimes <laughs> things are not too kind, but luckily the fight's done now and you just have to dodge the yeah. cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's only going to be about like a, a handful of seconds uh, lost over that, but the dunk is really, really cool to show off. Oh, I just love this. Like the what? The three hits? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what went on there is that, like, I didn't get my initial charge slash, and I, I definitely need to, like, uh, you know, adjust for that. But with those uh, those platforms moving in and out, like, pretty quickly, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to react. But uh, what we're supposed to do, so, yes, uh, we were supposed to be using the axe. The axe does 25 damage on its own, and the frost caliber hitting someone out of, the, uh, out of their frozen status will deal double damage. Now, in, in Veil 4's head, the third boss's, uh, the th yeah, the third boss's head deals, or, yeah, is inflicted by innate double damage. So that's a quad damage. You're doing, like, 100 damage per strike with that. And that's, that's how you, like, really, really make a quick work of that boss. But it's okay. I mean, like, if you want to watch, if you want to watch the quick kill, just watch the world record that I set, like, literally two hours ago. Or follow Blacktastic on twitch.tv slash theblacktastic. That, that, that as well, parentheses. <laughs> All the way. Uh, stage four, this is a really short stage. This is where it, like any percent becomes any percent. We have to be actually be really careful about how we expend our weapon energy because we need enough for the zip and enough for the boss quick kill. I think we'll have enough. Oh yeah, we'll have more than enough. All right, so coming up is this boss, Valak. <laughs> Valak has two phases. It's twin-headed dragons for the first phase. And we're going to be uh, using a lot of that ice axe that we were talking about a little bit earlier and make quick work of the first phase. And a one and a two. Make them go woo. Damage boost on the platform. Switch back to Zangetsu. You already know what it do. And again, I don't really want to say this is like the uh, most irritating quick kill, but the double quad stack with the charge slash is what we want. I got two. That's fine. That's why the frost caliber is there, so the boss cannot, you know, attack like that, but we were just one hit off. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. The lock is, is like, like it's. I love this game because it's so colorful. It's so vibrant. Oh, yeah. Like the the boss designs are just so incredible. I have to yeah. ask though. So with the <laughs> zip, do you have to move it all once you're kind of in the wall, or do you Not just drop straight one, no. down? No. For the next one, I'll be explaining in stage seven. You have to move a little bit, but I'm moving in a very specific manner. Uh, but that also, one, this you just is my drop, favorite song through. in the game coming up. Oh, the Galia Minerva! I love it. Oh, it's great. I absolutely love that. Yeah, this is the this is the stage from Ritual of the Night, the the very first stage from Ritual of the Night, y'all. Uh, we just picked up the Demon Essence. The Demon Essence is the main power up for this segment because all of our physical hits, our physical damage, is actually increased by one, and that actually can transfer from ally to ally. It's like like it's not only Zangetsu that gets uh, you know the use of that power, which is really really nice. But uh. It might be silly thinking like, oh, it's just like one damage for like every one hit. Like that definitely adds up, especially with like how we do the damage stacking in this game. Yeah, a lot, a lot of a, <laughs> a lot of team lifting, a lot of a just casual floor clipping and doors not existing, which is why I love any percent. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, these mini boss doors do exist. Yeah, these, these do exist, but um. Yeah, someone's saying in the chat, like, this is a very beginner-friendly speedrun. Ultimate, definitely, yes. Because, like, you do have the free range of movement. And, like, the movement is something that you have to optimize. But you you're, you just also have... Oh, we got the glitch again! Let's go! Nice. <laughs> so that we don't have to walk through that entire uh, uh, screen transition. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, this is a beginner-friendly speedrun. Like, even though you have to optimize movement, you're still bestowed a whole bunch of damage with the big old axe with the charge slash 
and you know, which is a whole bunch of stuff. So, and for this upcoming boss, Andreofus, we do want a specific number of weapon points at the very least, so we can perform the quick kill. Didn't even get into. <laughs> we were talking about so much stuff that like we didn't even get into like what these other people did. We were just talking about trying to get to a Miriam, Alfred. Uh, which is the old guy can do a whole bunch of uh, uh, magical spells. We make a lot of use of the ice here. There we go. Ice axe. Do we get the good pattern? Maybe. Yes, we do. And we get. Uh, there we go. That's a big old axe right there. So yeah, y'all can y'all can feast your eyes on this cyber peacock as he does his last dance. And while, while he's doing this little, you know, uh, temper tantrum, fading into the nether, we can go to... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, you can follow <laughs> The Blacktastic at uh, <laughs> twitch.tv slash The Blacktastic. Um, I, I, don't, I don't mean the show, but this is like the week after GDQ. Absolutely. We're trying to hit a milestone here. I am only... Let, let, let's see. 300, no, 270 follows away from hitting 20k follows on my Twitch channel. So it would be, so if you like retro speed runs, if you like indie game speed runs, if you like Metroidvanias, if, if you like Friends of Eck and a whole bunch of other horror game speed runs or speed runners, then please follow the channel. I'm just saying as well, why you've been, uh, why you've been talking about it? There's been seamless gameplay going on the whole time as well, which. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get a little bit of that too. Like, like as long as you know there's people to chat with, like I'll definitely, you know, talk about the game or talk about how we do, you know, certain boss strategies here. Like I should be talking a little bit about this game. Uh, we picked up the power glove a little bit earlier on in this stage, and that will also uh, increase your damage by a, a point. So mix with that uh, demon essence. That's two per hit, and like you can just see how they like really like you know add up at the end. Um, let's do some casual floor clipping, and of course you're just going to be seeing Zangetsu for the majority of this run because, I mean, he he's the one that absolutely can run. Um, but he, he's really fast in the manner of uh, Ritual of the Night as well. I also speed run Ritual of the Night with Zangetsu, and he is an incredibly fast character. Uh, if you want to see that at a GDQ VOD, that was the Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online one. And so I actually, one, uh, okay. Oh, um, I was gonna say with that one, I know you used your, um, it's the, yep. it's the snack box, the junk food controller. Yes, 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 the snack box. So, uh, uh I also did that for, yeah, yeah, I also play a lot of fighting games with that, but it's also a really, like, except, ooh. Oh, dodge that hammer. Nice. Good uh, but also it's, a, it's really, really, um, you know, accessible with, uh, you know, 2D platforming. I, I like it for 2D platformers. So do you use it for this game? No, no, I'm just using a regular Xbox controller for this. Just mainly because there's a whole bunch of like switching going on. Um, this is a pretty, oh, I mean, we'll deal with that pattern, I guess. Uh, so this is a really, really random boss because you have to uh, kind of read where the umbrellas are supposed to spawn. And this is like the most like RNG intensive boss in the game, but like she can go down like pretty easily because uh, once you get like the ice axes again, you're just dealing a massive amount of damage in this run. So it's just it's just a sense of like trying to <laughs> make sense of where she'll be. Yeah, that's bloodless. Based off of Batley, Batley, however you want to frame it. If you're a fan of Castlevania Bloodlines as well. Bartley. Uh, here we go. Stage seven. So this is regarded as like the longest stage in the game, but with any percent, we get to cut it in basically like a third or so. Uh, we get to use a really, really cool zip here, which is really cool. But uh, we have to get there first. And getting there is pretty perilous. Um, especially if you want to do it like in a really fast fashion. Again, teamwork making the dream work, wing smashing. As you can see, like, <laughs> the, uh, Jeeble, since, since we talked about him, definitely not Alucard. It took about like half of his health. 
So like, you gotta be really prepared to take those shortcuts because they are guarded by the fearsomest of foes, like this frog enemy right here. We're gonna try to use froggy for the skip. There we go. Also, doors don't exist. Now, there is a slight photosensitivity warning because there's a lot of uh, white and gray tile here. So please uh, avert your eyes if you are photosensitive because it's about to get hella Sonic 2 up in this piece with all this black and gray tile. Look at all this black and gray tile. So what we're doing here is that uh, as if you see, if you saw before we did the zip, that, that there were stairs in the top right corner. We are actually going up those infinite stairs until we drop off at a specific point where we can resume gameplay. There we go. If it was if it was too late, I would soft lock. If it was too early, I would actually zip back to the beginning of the stage. So we gotta be really careful about how we uh, go about that. But yeah, that's 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 any percent too. Like these these zips are really cool and they make the troublesome stages pretty painless. We grab that safety. We got everything that we need. Now coming up is um, Bothan. I think his name is Bothan. He's like he's a little. Well, he likes to read, but he also likes to kill things. So let's kill him first. So we're gonna do a slight double charge stack. We're gonna ice axe, ice axe. It's 50 damage for every ice axe. Then we're gonna finish him off with a double stack, like that. Excellent. And this is like one of his like this is one of my favorite like desperation moves in the game because he just goes really nuts like. But he ends up, well. You just saw how he ended up right there. <laughs> he tried his best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, indeed. Now uh, we got uh, the final stage. There's, you know, like in typical classic Castlevania fashion, there's like, you know, at least less than 10 stages. But this will this will put a lot of uh, tests to your ability so far. We're actually gonna go ahead and grab the fire shield for Alfred, and we get little small glitches again, like going upstairs to go downstairs. A lot of these enemies are pretty tanky, but we can dispose of them with the charge slash pretty easily. And we actually like retaining the dash speed from Zangetsu, so we're gonna activate while we're in the air with Alfred. And this fire shield will actually shield us against these little, like, you know, devil termites or locusts. So we got a double charge stacks there. We're just going to be building up weapon points along the way. <laughs> like, like, like they, they literally wanted these rooms to be treacherous, but you have ultimate Zen Getsu. Also, doors do not exist. It never gets old. The whole run just... <laughs> <laughs> really nice chapel climb. Like one of the most beautiful looking like rooms in the game, in my opinion. Here we go, mid boss. Do we double stack? Yes, we do. He's done. <laughs> oh, and there goes stairs. Ah, the, 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 the deadly, dastardly stairs. So like in typical... Classic Castlevania, the stairs are pretty jank. You can kind of fall through them even though, though you're holding up. But that's fine, we're still schmoovin'. I was gonna say, I hate those frogs so much, just having ran this game before. I think that room killed me like eight times. <laughs> <laughs> we got one more, to, one more sub weapon to pick up the ball and chain. Now we got two phases of the final boss. Phase one's gonna be pretty easy if you paid attention to the earlier in the stage with the, with the locusts. Alfred's fire is actually gonna shield us from most of the attacks. So we're gonna get in a cheap shot with a double stack here. We'll reapply. I guess like around like 180 HP or something like that. And the fire, the fire shield can definitely deal some points of damage as well. You gotta keep in mind that the that the gauntlet and the demon essence, well we're not using the demon essence, but they don't apply to sub weapons. So we got 
one final phase, which will be really easy because we have big range with the ball and chain. Then we get the charge slash as well. We can reach uh, the weak point with double jumps. So this is pretty much a solo Zangetsu so, uh, show. Time's gonna be on the final hit. So we're just gonna be keeping chaining our ball and chain, our charge slash, and now Alfred's gonna protect us. So as long as we keep that steady rhythm and we pick up uh, some of these weapon pots along the way. Shouldn't be much longer now. Time. AG, <laughs> cleave the moon. The cleave, yes. Uh, there, are, there are multiple endings throughout this game as well. So like, whether you teamed up to face Gremory, whether you face uh, face them by yourself as Zangetsu, there's a lot of like, there's actually quite a handful of endings, but this ending entails that Zangetsu uh, had shielded the last ditch effort attack from Gremory, and it succumbs to the darkness. Oh no, what's gonna happen? He saved his friends, but at, at what cost? And this is how Nightmare Mode is unlocked, where you go through like the second loop of the castle or of the, of the game where the enemies are harder you're own, you don't have Zangetsu you only have Miriam, Alfred and Jeebel but the final boss and the final stage at the end is something to behold you might see it as an incentive at a future GDQ we'll see possibly but for now GG and first off you have any shout outs you like to give to anyone uh, shout outs to the brigade you know who you are get the vibes in the chat uh, thank you all very much for, for uh, you know, uh, supporting me for all of this, all of this ride. And again, if, if I have uh, entertained you in any way in this 22 minute span, again, please follow me at twitch.tv slash theblacktastic. Uh, also, shout outs to the Bloodstained Speedrunning community, uh, especially Streiser and Laxus. Like they, they've certainly paved the way for a lot of routing for the normal modes, ultimate modes, and, and nightmare modes, respectively. Uh, shout out to, I mean, obviously, thank you very much to Dices for having me onto this platform. Speed runs from the crypts. Absolutely. Well, the most horror adjacent run on this, uh, on this uh, broadcast. It's a broad genre. <laughs> it encompasses a lot of things. It has vampires, it has the moon, it fits. Thank you. And also, uh, if you want to see more of me, uh, we, we did run Mega Man The Wily Wars, Mega Man on Sega Genesis at Summer Games Done Quick earlier last week. So. Go ahead and give that a, you know, a, 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 a watch, a look-see. Uh, like Ek was saying, all of the Summer Games Done Quick VODs are live. And I'm sorry for doing the host job for him. No, no, it's, it's appreciated. It's, it's, just it's natural, all good. But, you are right. Yeah, it's just natural. But yeah, Summer Games Done Quick VODs are live. If you missed any of them, there are a lot. I mean, this was a pretty stacked games list, so shout out to the games committee. Um, but you can see runs like mine. You can see... Uh, that uh, Ocarina of Time beta, that here together moment, that powerful here together moment. There's a lot of magical moments that took place with GDQ, and it didn't even like most of it didn't even revolve around good gameplay. So, uh, so yeah, I mean that's it from me, y'all. Uh, thank you very much, Jack. <laughs> all right, well, thank you once again, Bobby. I know the moment I saw the tweet, I was like, all right, got to be on the hotfix immediately. Uh, usually after uh, SGDQ, I like to plan the, the backup show because there's a lot of horror games in there. But I want to say thank you once again for doing the run. And for anyone in chat, if you have not followed the Black Tastic, please do so. An amazing human being, amazing dude, and a great runner. So with that being said, we're going to be right back very quick for a quick wellness break where we prepare for our next run of Resident Evil 7. Uh, if you would like to, feel free to tweet at GamesDoneQuick uh, on Twitter and let us know what your favorite run of the event was. We have been loving hearing all about these. Anyway, stand up, touch your toes, do not die of blood clots. We'll be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Hope you all enjoyed that wonderful run of Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon by the Blacktastic. A uh, great dude, I hung with him a lot uh, during GDQ and just a wonderful guy in general. Very talented runner, had two runs during the events and you know, many runs previous to that, so I have many uh, high praises. Also, while during the break, I was actually talking out loud and I realized I actually run every single one of these games to some extent. So that's kind of a, a neat thing for GDQ backups. Anyway, uh, leading into our next game here, uh, this is going to be Resident Evil 7, which actually uh, only made two GDQ appearances and was going to be possibly due to make its way back on the main stage, but not quite in the way you expect. 
So very often, uh, especially in the world of modern gaming, you get a lot of DLCs and campaigns, and they tend to be pretty cool. So I think this is going to be a very similar vibe to the last one, and this is actually a personal favorite category, uh, mainly because I love games that incorporate horror and boxing. It's just a fun thing. So if you know what that means, you'll know. If you don't know, I guess get your favorite uh, Rocky montage emotes out, because we're going to be going to Resident Evil 7, the end of Zoe with Maxi Lobes. Go for it, because I can't say take it away. <laughs> fair, fair. Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is indeed Resident Evil 7's End of Zoe DLC. Now, before I begin, I do want to say this is the first time that a DLC for Resident Evil 7 has ever been on backup for a main event. So that was pretty cool. But not only that, this was the only Resident Evil of, of any type that was on, on uh, backup. So I was pretty shocked when I saw that. I was like, OK, cool. Um, didn't run into the event, though. It stayed on backup. Makes sense. Well, that's why we have the show. It was, it was a busy week, so Ectisis was like, hey, you, run this. And I was like, yes, please. So, yeah, thanks, Ek. Of now, course. we can begin. I will call time. Not call time. Dude, I did that on my GDQ run as well. I keep saying that. Uh, we'll start in three, <laughs> two, one, and go. All right, end of Zoe. So uh, this is the best DLC of like any Resident Evil game. And the reason why is because you punch everything. That's it. That's that's all there is to it. You punch the molded. There is nothing more enjoyable than that. But the general strat on those uh, first molded like the just the generic molded is you give them that very specific combo that I'm doing over and over again and you want that last punch to hit them in the head. That is that is the key to killing them as quickly as possible and uh, you probably saw me also punch a door open. You can't punch those open until every single enemy that is aggroed onto you is dead. So technically you can sneak around and just open the door, but that is uh, not fast. We go fast. So we punch. So uh, really quick lore-wise, I just want to mention, uh, if you're wondering, wh why is there a boxing game in Resident Evil? Uh, this is like, uh, what, Joe Baker? This is uh, Joe Baker, yeah. He is a... It's Jack's brother. A, uh, he's been distant to the family, like, up, like, the block, and he didn't realize that everyone got zombified. He was just eating bugs in the woods. And wrestling alligators. Exactly. The life, the life of a swamp man. I mean, he's also a boxer, apparently. Pretty good one, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, he punched the head off a zombie. Yeah, heck yeah. Or it's uh, mold, I should say. So you're probably thinking, like, end of Zoe, but you don't play as Zoe. Well, that's because this is Zoe right here. We're saving her. Uh, Joe, like, runs into the uh, the soldiers in the middle of the, uh, the bayou, and Zoe was, like, kind of calcified or as I like to say, auditioning for Frozen 3. Um, and she is on the verge of dying. All thanks to Evelyn. So Joe finds her, knocks them out, uh, leaves them for dead, basically. And then you got to figure out how to save Zoe. And this all happens like... No! This all happens like six days or something after Not a Hero. So, and Not a Hero happens directly after the main game. So, just to give you an idea of uh, how long it took for the molded to kind of spread to other parts of the bayou. And that evil swamp monster that you just saw. Uh, spoilers. That is the remains of Jack, because in the main game you you like give him the the serum and you calcify him and then he breaks and you think he's dead, but uh, like there's still I don't know how it works, but like there's part of him that is still connected to the hive mind, so like the mold just forms into the remains of Jack Baker. I don't even think he's there. He's he's not there. It's just. 
But anyways, um, that was the first section, kind of serves as an introduction to the DLC. And now we're going to move on to the second section, which has uh, a little bit more, a little bit more to it. I'll explain as we go. But yeah, the maxi. Yeah, what up? Did you say that this run packs a punch? Oh, it it absolutely does. It does pack a punch. It's short, but oof, it's good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. I did. I did. I'm used to getting booed. I didn't actually think I'd get a. I didn't think you would. Well, I mean, that. if Starwin was here. Uh, bless Starwin. He's a good dude. Yeah, that's facts. Uh, don't you worry, Zoe. Uh, so when I when I run this like on my stream just for fun, I actually have the Simpsons mod enabled, but. You know, a lot of people know that there was a big update for RE7, RE2, and RE3 remake. So, uh, I can't use that mod because I didn't down patch. But yeah, the Simpsons mod usually has uh, Zoe as Maggie, and Maggie's absolutely massive. You literally can't see anything in this section where you hold uh, Zoe, so that's, you know, that's pretty silly. I definitely do need to down patch. I want that mod back. I'll be back with but we put it down on the couch, and now we are headed to kind of like the first section where we start actually picking up items and whatnot. Hopefully the crawling molded does not aggro when I run past here. I Uh, you all good? I think Maxi may be, uh, he may have lagged out. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if the game is still up or it's frozen, but he was on the crawling guy. Yeah, all right, there it is. It may have uh, lagged out. He may be on technical difficulties for a moment here. Um, oh, he's better. He is. He's back. Uh, All right, we're back. Uh, sorry, yeah. slight technical difficulty there. The crawling guy did notice Maxi. Um, anyway, on your account, we show the time <laughs> once again. All right, uh, I'm gonna unpause in three, two, one, go. Uh, what was the last thing that happened on stream? On screen, rather. Crawling guy did not notice you. <laughs> okay, so we fought Jack one. That was a mini boss fight. It's really short, so um, yeah. We just basically give him the same combo that I've been using this whole time, uh, which is right click, left click, right click, left click. And now we're blocking alligators with our arms, which is only a thing you can do on easy difficulty. If you try to do that on normal, the alligator will just eat you. Um, but yeah, it's an alligator. <laughs> Indeed, that's true. I'm surprised that you can actually live through that on easy. They were being very generous. But I suppose uh, they weren't being very generous with Joe Must Die. If anybody's played this DLC and they've tried Joe Must Die difficulty, it's actually crazy hard. Um, there's a lot of traps and stuff, and enemy placement is just all over the place and bonkers. But yeah. Sorry for that hiccup. That's all good. Now we're going to use... We're going to use an item for the first time. We're going to use the spears. Uh, the Kind of like the black blade arm molded. Um, they, they have more health, so it's better to take them out with a spear or a stealth kill. Like this. I think they have like twice the health, if I recall correctly. I like how he still is able to break store. the neck of a mold. Like, he's mold. Yeah, it sounds kind of weird, huh? Why do they have necks? They, uh... They don't. But... Let's just imagine they do, for now. Just for Joe's sake. Also, no, I think we're... I think we're good, babe, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. I think it was just a hiccup. This is it. 
Fuck. Also, I can relate to his computer usage here. Yeah, he's just bashing it. Don't, I mean, don't, don't do that. That's, Joe, Joe Baker is the only one who can do that, okay? Well, actually, in IT, it is something called percussive maintenance. Per percussive maintenance? <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't work, you hit it, and then it works. Usually with, uh, I don't know, hard drives. That's, that's just silly. So Jack 2, much harder than the first Jack fight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna craft a bomb, and then we're gonna start giving him, uh, giving him the combos. And hopefully he roars, which he did. We got the roar. Beautiful, which means we're going to one cycle him. Without him doing that roar, we can't one cycle him. It's very specific. There it is. Just like that, one cycle Jack 2. Uh, yeah, bomb crafting. So... That's how you get it done, by the way. You take a chem fluid, you mix it with some wood, and there you go. You have an explosive, <laughs> explosive bomb. I don't know how that works, but it just does, so we, we take advantage of it. But yeah, you can already tell this DLC is just extremely different from the main game or the other DLCs. I, I don't really know... I don't really know what made them think, yes, we need Sorry. Uncle Joe to punch and spear and bomb everything. Um, but I'm glad that they did. I'm glad that they made this DLC. Because this DLC came out at the same time as Not A Hero. I actually think that they delayed Not A Hero just to kind of revise it, but also they wanted to release End of Zoe maybe at the same time. Because I know a lot of people were like waiting for Not A Hero for a while after RE7's uh, release. But, and they're, I guess they're doing the same thing with Village, you know, they've got a lot st uh, in store for the release of that DLC. They are telling me we're gonna get a boxing DLC for Village? I would, I would love that. I don't think we are going to get that, but it would have been pretty cool. Would have been pretty cool. Oh, you're gonna get it. Should have just added Joe Joe Baker to mercenaries. Add him to the uh, the reverse. <laughs> I uh I don't know how that's gonna go. That's Damn. this whole place is gone to hell. Yeah, just <laughs> we'll see how that goes. It would go carefully. Okay, yeah, it'll go carefully. Hopefully they have uh, anti-cheat and stuff. Gotta be up ahead. Oh, someone, had, someone asked if the molded dude who took away Zoe's the same dude. Yeah, that's the same guy. He, he just keeps coming back, you know. You rip off mm -hmm. a skull, he grows a new one. It, it, that's, how it, that's how skulls work, man. Exactly, yeah. If you're, if you're molded, that's, that's the benefit. I wish I could regrow my skull. It would come in handy. It could. So that second section is done. This is the third section. I don't really have names for any of these sections. I just kind of think that the run is split up into sections because you, you take a boat ride from the first to the second, and then you take a boat ride from the second to the third, and so it just kind of makes sense. But uh, this is where like a lot of really cool strats happen. There's a lot of cool stuff in this area. And also a lot of luck-based things. Which, uh, this first one is, will the alligator not bite me? Unfortunate. Oh, the second one. The second one swam away. That's good. You know, one for two. We'll take it. And then this one over here. We'll see if it bites me as I climb. Nope, we're good. And now I'm going to show off something really silly. Uh, you eat bugs for health. Not bad. Ah, ah, keybinds. What? Okay. So, that's how you get health in this DLC. Uh, you eat bugs. As, as you do. As you do. As a swamp man would do. I'm gonna pick up I mean, this, have, uh, this branch. Have you tried it? Put down this bomb. Uh. 
Oh. Messed up that strat there. As you can see, I tried to throw the spear through the window, but it didn't quite work out. Break open this door. There's going to be a few molded here. I'm going to take this guy out first. He actually died, died, which is good, because sometimes he doesn't, and then he wastes a bunch of time. That was a very, very smooth room right there. That was practically perfect. Pick up those two spears, and we're going to get ready to... Uh, clean up this section really quickly before more molded spawns. We're gonna kill this guy. Pick up that wooden branch, pick up these two spears. Put this down, blow that up, throw that spear, break open this door, and beautiful. Just like that. And you can hear the molded actually spawned right behind me. So there's just like this little bit of time where when you kill those last three molded, you have time to break open the door before the game realizes, oh, I'm supposed to spawn more enemies. So that's a pretty neat strat there. And now we're going to spawn this guy. Uh, I don't have... Why do I not have a bomb? That's weird. Okay, we're going to spear this guy twice. We're going to give this guy the punch combo. He fell over. That's not exactly what we're looking for. Uh-oh. The improv. We got him. <laughs> I don't know where that other spear went. It's like all the way over there. All right, it's a bit of an improv strat there, but it worked. It worked. That's all that matters. It's a goddamn sad. You know, I understand punching the zombies, but Joe doesn't have to insult them, too. <laughs> wait, wait, what? He doesn't have what? He doesn't have to insult the zombies, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He, he does the very generic burn. Jack, and so this is the big reveal that this the swamp monster's Jack, which I already told you earlier. So right. that's Jack. Uh, it, it's just his face. Like it's just like his his like likeliness was used by the mold, like the hive mind, I guess. My favorite part his about likeness. this DLC. Oh god. Oh, I was just correcting myself. What was your favorite Jack. part? My favorite part is that, like, later, like, you find out, uh, you know, how Joe's been estranged and everything. Mm -hmm. Joe mentions, like, oh, yeah, I remember when I used to break your nose. I remember when I used to beat you up. Maybe there's a reason why he's estranged. Yeah, so <laughs> Jack and Joe are not, uh, not really checking up on each other as often as brothers would. You think it'd be Jack being the uh, the zombie, but no, Joe's pretty uh, pretty mean to Jack. Joe's yeah, Joe's a bit mean. That's true. But yeah, that is that is the reason why. But it's funny because I think Joe likes the rest of the family, but not not his brother. Not his bro. He likes he likes Zoe though enough to save her life. So that's what matters. That's why we have this DLC. Oh hell, Jackie boy. Which is canon, by the way. What's All of this is canon. The real cannon is the man's arm. You seen that thing? True. <laughs> yes, sir. So also, this is the um, part of the game where like they're trying to they're trying to buff up the enemy count and make things harder and the last jack fight needs to be, you know, this, this super epic battle. So Joe finds a advanced multi-purpose gauntlet. What are fancy toys? As you do. Which, uh, you know, as you do in the middle of the swamp. So now it we have like the power, power glove. glove. Exactly. Yes. Hey. It's the power glove. Uh, which has three different levels of damage. There's the basic damage, there's charge level two, and then there's charge level three. And we're going to be using charge level 3 just a little bit here um, to get some of these molded out of the way. Okay, there we go. Go through this door. And now we should be good for jack 3. Which is, uh, 
Jack 3 is very luck based. There's some weird stuff that can happen in Jack 3. Wait, Jack. And it's all, it, it all it, you know, it's all based on his like attack patterns, his movement patterns. So. What was that noise? Did you hear that? No. What? Maybe I'm going crazy. I thought I just heard. I'm entirely deaf. Right. I, uh, yeah. Well, that sounded silly. Did anybody in the chat hear that? I don't, I don't know. It was like right as soon as I was entering the door. Well, it is a spooky game. It is a spooky game. Maybe it's haunted. I have been spooked. So we're going to give a, a charged punch right here when he goes down. And then we're going to continue to combo him. Yeah, here's that quote you were referencing. Remember when I clotheslined you into the swamp? <laughs> Maybe he's not invited to Thanksgiving for a reason. <laughs> yeah, right. This is looking like a pretty good second phase, though. He's giving me the attacks I want. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, dude, that was so nice. The first phase was a little uh, little scuffed, but that was really good. We should get the finisher here. There it is. Very nice. That is pretty solid. A farewell from the family, brother. That's <laughs> so cool. Uh, but yeah, that is that is End of Zoe. It's a very short but sweet DLC run. Time is going to come up when this black screen is over after we finally give Zoe some serum. You gotta be all right now. Yeah, just inject that high C ecto cooler. Very nice. All right, and time. G G G G. Are you okay? I'm fine. Yeah, that was End of Zoe. It's super fun. Honestly, probably the best DLC to run apart from. Apart from like not a hero, uh, but I think Enzo Zoe is better. It's just way more entertaining, way it's, it's funnier. It's just more enjoyable in my opinion. But uh, hopefully we'll see it at uh, main event one day. One day, possibly. It would be cool uh, to have that happen. Backups do pretty good going to future events. No guarantees, obviously, but hopefully it'll be nice to see if it either gets in the next one or the one after that even. Yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll and see. While we're here. Do uh, you have any shout-outs you'd like to give? Um, shout-outs to, like, the entirety of the Resident Evil 7 speedrun community. They're uh, they're pretty cool. Got to hang out with a few of them at, uh, at SGDQ. Good good people. Um, most of them don't even run this DLC, but they are really, really good at, like, every other thing. Uh, whether it be the main game, new game, or knife only, or not a hero, like, professional. You name it, like they're very good at all of it. Um, but yeah, uh, shout outs to shout outs to them and shout outs to chat. Uh, I know a lot of you were probably tuning in the whole week of SGDQ. So if you did catch my Lord of the Rings Return of the King run, which was Wednesday morning. Um, hey, thanks for being up super late or Zoe. super early, or maybe Zoe. you were across the pond it's and it was like perfect timing for you, you lunchtime. Um, we both did. But yeah, thanks to those who tuned you in for that. And uh, if you do want to check that out, it is up on the Game Sun Quick I YouTube. Keep my promises. And this ending sucks. Thank you, Ethan. He, she thanks Ethan instead of. I, let's just uh, pretend that Zoe thanks Uncle Joe off screen. Right? Yay. And then he was forgotten about Yay. it and abandoned. <laughs> Back to the woods to eat uh, a crawdad, apparently. Uh, it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't bugs, it was crawdads. But anyway, speaking yeah. of which, um, I will not have crawdads, but if anyone wanted to find you, where can they find you? You can find me on my channel, twitch.tv slash maxilobes. Uh, I'm maxilobes on literally everything. I'm the one and only, so if you want to follow me on Twitch... You want to sub to my YouTube? You want to find me on Twitter? Just Maxi loves everywhere. Um, huh. Which yeah, thanks to those who do, I appreciate it. Uh, much love. Thank you, Eck, for having me on the show yet again. Um, and shout outs also to to Bobby. He did an awesome run before me, and then coming up really soon is Demonic with Clock Tower Three, which was also on backup, which I was pretty excited to see so that's really cool um, well so stick around support him for that and uh yeah 
Thank you. We've seen some good stuff. Uh, that being said, we uh -huh. are going to be setting up for that next run. Uh, but before that, uh, we are going to be right back. It is a wellness break. It's time to stand up really quick, touch your toes between these games. We have to get ready, so feel free to grab water, grab a snack, don't die of blood clots. These are the things you should do. Uh, in addition to that, Frame Fatales will be having its next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, from August 21st to 27th. The marathon schedule will be releasing July 8th. Uh, type exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat or go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more info. We'll be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. That was a very fun run of RE7. And, you know, sometimes the enemies in the game can be much more powerful than you expect. Also, I just, I, I love any, like I said, any horror game that features uh, melee combat and punching. I just think it's a really fun aesthetic you don't see enough of. Uh, speaking of aesthetics we don't see enough of, uh, this is probably one of the more unique games I think's ever been on the GDQ roster. Uh, well, this game did get pulled from backup, this is a personal favorite of mine as well, because, well, if you know anything about me, uh, the theme song, if you go to my own personal stream, all my icons are scissors, uh, I'm a big fan of Clock Tower. I love Clock Tower, it's probably one of my favorite franchises of all time. So a lot of my identity is based around that. So it's truly an honor to say that the next run uh, you'll be seeing is Imagine if Sailor Moon was a horror game. I know some of you are going to tell me, but Sailor Moon is debatably a horror. Just imagine it's Sailor Moon being a pure, like, horror experience. Like, just un undebatable. Anyway, here is Clock Tower 3 featuring Demonic Robots. Here we go. Alright, hey there everybody, my name is Demonic Robots and welcome to Clock Tower 3. Like X said, this is a uh, basically Sailor Moon but horror. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, speedruns of all time. It's one that, like X Dices, I have a very uh, personal connection with. So I was really excited when it got into backup and hopefully that means uh, some good luck for us at future events. I am joined, obviously, uh, by Egg Dices, but also for commentary, uh, Carcinogen is going to be helping me out with this. Uh, Carcy, you ran this game a, a little while back. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been it's been a, it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, so glad that you get to see this here. Uh, there's going to be a couple of new things, you know, uh, just some fun stuff overall. But we're going to get started right here. Uh, time is going to start when we hit a uh, new game. So if we are ready for the timer, I'll give a quick little countdown. On your mark. Uh, three, two, one, go. So Clock Tower 3 is a survival horror game by Capcom. Uh, it was made during their kind of peak golden age, right as around when the uh, PS2 was really picking up on some super good horror games. And this was not one of them. Uh, this is a big change from the rest of the Clock Tower games, if you know those ones. Um, basically has absolutely no connection to the originals, but it's still a fun horror game nonetheless. The main difference between this game and Resident Evil is that Resident Evil has guns and this one does not. This one is actually kind of closer to Amnesia in the sense that you don't really get any weapons and you're not going to be defeating enemies. It's more so you're going to be getting chased by what are called subordinates, who are basically evil entities that are trying to stop uh, Alyssa from uh, realizing her true power and potential. So the basic plot of this is Alyssa is 14. She is just coming up on her 15th birthday and she gets a call from her mother that says, whatever you do, don't come home. It's dangerous. So she does exactly that. She comes home, her mom is missing. And right now her goal is to find her mother and kind of just figure out what's going on. Um, as we have returned, there is a lot of creepy stuff going on in the house and it's going to get a little bit weirder, but we have a few things to point out. The first is going to be the panic meter. There isn't a health system actually in the game. Uh, she doesn't have an HP bar. It's nothing like that. You don't heal with herbs. You have a panic system. Essentially what this means is whenever you get attacked by an enemy, either they swing near you or they actually hit you, it'll fill up your panic meter. And when that gets to a full panic, then what ends up happening is you lose control of Alyssa and you also are in one shot danger. So if you get hit during this stage, uh, you are dead and it is game over. Um, so we're gonna be doing our best to avoid that. And it's actually going to be pretty tight. You're going to see a lot of the times the panic meter is like actually very close to filling up completely and sending us to a panic. And we just narrowly avoid it. And here is where the game gets weird. We right now we were in, you know, early 2000s uh, England. That's where the game started out with. And 
Then we touch a uh, magical object, essentially, I guess, and we end up getting teleported back into uh, London during the World War II bombing era. So right now we are now uh, transferred back into London, and this is the main gimmick of the game, is we're going to be bouncing back and forth between both time and space. Um, I'll admit, I haven't watched Sailor Moon. I know that's a, a horrible travesty that I need to rectify at some point, but I'm sure that probably has uh, some trout... Uh, space travel and time travel as well. But here we go. This is going to be uh, the first introduction of what are called spirit enemies. Um, they don't really do too much during the run, and unless you're doing a 100% save file or you're trying to uh, do that category, these aren't going to be too often found in the run. Essentially what you have to do is you have to bring a specific item to a specific body in order to uh, free their spirit and allow them to uh, cross over. Um, sometimes these will give optional items, uh, like that one gives a, uh, essentially what is a, uh, I guess a one up or extra life. Uh, when you're panicked, if you pick up that item, then it stops you from dying if you get hit, but we're not going to grab that. Um, and then sometimes they'll also give actually important items like keys and things that you need uh, to continue on in the game. So we're not going to be doing any of the optional ones. The only ones that we're going to be doing are the ones that are required to beat the game. But we're going to be heading down into this area. So what is going on right now is... Um, I'll spoil the story a little bit. Alyssa is what is called a rooter. And a rooter is a girl from a specific bloodline that has, you know very powerful uh, blood and that allows her access to these powers. Um, typically during uh, the game you kind of learn and find out about your history and essentially what ends up happening is rooters are supposed to be fighting like evil subordinates and entities. Subordinates are uh, evil monsters who work for the entity and the entities are people who are trying to become immortal and uh, you know just do the typical bad guy villain stuff. Also, you saw right there that I threw water onto the door. Um, that was very important because that is how you break those uh, seals. The water in this game has some weird properties to it. Um, like as you saw right there, it went through a wall. That's going to be uh, relevant later on. But just so you know, uh, the water is either based on where you're looking or if there is an enemy or an like, important object near you they need to throw water onto. Um, Mind if I give is, a quick shout out, by the way? Yes, go ahead. So I see in a, the GQ chat here, we actually have a, uh, one of our Japanese runner friends, uh, Batake. Oh, awesome. Batake, yeah, absolutely insane clock tower speed runner. Uh, definitely way better at this game than I am. A legendary runner. I just have immense respect yep. for him and uh, a lot of the friends at RTA in Japan. I do as well. So we're going to be hey, moving on to... Yeah. So we're going to continue on. So we're going to be running into the first subordinate. This is Sledgehammer. And boy, this guy is a character. Um, it is a, kind of a basic thing is that all the subordinates that we see are basically serial killers who died at some point and got like kind of quote unquote resurrected in a weird way to work for the subordinate. So this is the first one that we run into. Um, he is the introduction to the core gameplay mechanic of uh, chasers and you're supposed to hide or evade him do a bunch of other stuff. We're going to be not really doing any of that. We're just going to be like avoiding his hits as best as we can. And this is the first instance of that right there. Um, every single enemy in this game has different attack patterns, different uh, movement speeds, different everything that you kind of just have to get used to by playing the game. Um, it's also important to note that whenever we uh, hit enemy enemies with uh, the holy water, it'll actually stun them. Um, so this is very important because a lot of strats require us to uh, throw the waters at very specific times and also um, kind of mingle in with when we need to use them to unlock doors and other things. So uh, keeping track of our water is going to be something that I'm going to be very, very uh, careful about because if you even have like one less water than you need in certain areas, it can be very disastrous. Um, that was also a little introduction to what are called evade points. Evade points are essentially... Uh, whenever you're being chased by an enemy, you just go to an evade point and you can use it one time to uh, defeat the chaser for a temporary amount of time. So right there, for example, we use an evade point and we're able to stop Sledgehammer from chasing us for about 30 seconds. 
Um, but now that we have gone to a little girl called May's room, uh, we actually found a letter that is inviting us into the local theater. And we needed this to actually get into it. The whole goal of these areas are to find a specific item in order to uh, bring it back to a ghost and use that to gain a power in order to defeat these subordinates. Um, if you're not uh, able to follow the lore and it starts to get confusing, don't worry. I have played through this game dozens of times and I'm still just as confused as you. Um, that's kind of why I said earlier that this is a major departure from the rest of the series. Uh, the first few clock towers, they got weirder and weirder, but this is where it like really went off the deep end. All right. <laughs> so, gonna get another little chase scene right here. This one is actually relatively important. Um, we don't want to get hit, or we don't want him to swing at us uh, twice. Ah, oh, we got it right there. So we're gonna try and avoid another swing later on uh, for a strat to avoid basically getting panicked and doing the strat properly. Um, it's also worth noting that specific areas and camera angles uh, will essentially give us immortality uh, from actually being hit or actually getting chased by enemies. So, for example, when we're back here, Sledgehammer actually can't do anything about that. He uh, he just doesn't want to go backstage for whatever reason. Some of these very same areas, a uh, few of them, you can actually use them to recover your panic, but uh, whenever you're standing like in a doorway or something, your panic meter actually does not go down, even though you're completely immune from getting hit. So sometimes, you know, if you're using a lavender water, it's actually a good time to pop a lavender water on those doorways. Yep. Like, for example, whenever you're in that kind of camera angle right there, um, you basically just don't have to worry about getting hit at all. It's really nice. Also, we're going to use that panic right there, or that uh, lavender water right there, because he actually swung at me twice. Uh, if we didn't use a lavender water there, what ends up happening is for a strat later on, we actually get panicked and that is really bad. So we're going to try to avoid that um, as best as we can. Are you going to say, Carsey? Oh, I was going to say, essentially, Alyssa has uh, two hitboxes. One is like the hitbox directly on her model, and then there's another one, which is kind of like a, uh, which is kind of like a, a sphere or like a, uh, what's the word, like a cylinder, just like kind of drawn around her. So, like, if an enemy's attacks land in that cylinder, then it increases her panic meter, even though it doesn't really count as a hit. Yeah, and even, like, certain attacks will cause panic and other attacks won't. For example, if our boy Sledgehammer did a vertical swing instead of a horizontal swing earlier, it would have actually not given me any panic. Oh, that is very rare for him to do that. Yeah, that is, there's, there's, your, there's your panic right there. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do here. He's got as much time as he needs here. Did you get so both there's... lavenders? Uh, I did not, no. Ooh. No, this might be a little bit uh -oh. of an issue. Yeah. That is very weird. Uh, I have never had that happen before in my history of playing there, getting two swings. So that is actually a little bit surprising. Well, would it be a GDQ yeah. without it? Exactly. It always has to be like a GDQ event where that happens. Uh, thankfully, this game does have a continue system. I actually have no idea where it's going to put me. Probably farther beginning back than I actually Beginning of the want. area. The beginning of the stage here. Yep. Gotcha. All right, so we're going to go back a little bit, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't end up happening again. Yeah. Unfortunately... Yeah, Demonic had a... Uh... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was I, I was going to I was going to say, if Demonic had a sigil stone here, then uh, he would have been able to tank one hit, but... Uh, the problem was just simply that Sledgehammer just usurped literally all of all of his panic and he didn't have any lavender water, so. Yeah, and unfortunately I was trying to see if I could get away with that, but um, we actually need a holy water, or a lavender water for later on, so I was trying not to avoid that. And our holy water is very precise for when we need to use it. But it's okay, that sometimes happens. Uh, we're just going to do this once again. Also, the reason I'm picking up this note is it actually gives me the code for the locker later on. And we need that because even if you know, uh, even if you, like, you have previous knowledge of a puzzle solution, you still need to find it out in game in order to actually unlock it. So hopefully he's not promised. Yeah. So now we should be okay from any issues and we'll have the backup for later on. So that's not too bad. It works out. Where are you? 
so that uh, that jump scare where he uh, comes from the bottom of the screen right before the stairs, that's uh, pretty much 100% of the time, right? Yes. Um, for the most part, with the routing that we do, there's never really any random um, encounters that we run into, just random movement patterns. So Sledgehammer can do a whole lot of different things here. Some things are more common than others. Like I've had times where um, he's given me a pattern that's like pretty normal, like this one right here. He kind of goes all the way around. I've had other times where he is like just stuck in this doorway and it ends up actually working out because he'll open the door and you just kind of slide right past him. So it really just kind of depends on what the enemy's AI is uh, feeling for that day. So here we go, you are gonna actually see what was supposed to happen. We're gonna go right over here to avoid getting hit. Then we're gonna get him onto these stairs. And there we go, now he didn't swing, which is good. Um, it's also worth noting that whenever you are like entering a camera angle where you're safe, uh, if they are doing a swing at you, it doesn't apply the... Also, this is a little skip right here. Uh, we wait for the sigil to break by uh, abusing our, I guess, invincibility frames with that camera angle. So that was really nice. But essentially, if you get into a camera uh, position where you're like, quote unquote, safe, even if they swung at you, it doesn't apply panic until the very end of their animation. So if you um, kind of go into a safe angle as they're swinging at you, it shouldn't apply panic because um, it applies to the end of the animation. And if you're safe, then it goes, oh, you know, you're OK. So then it just doesn't give you any. Um, and that's a trick that we kind of use quite often. You know, um, essentially, this game's uh, way of progression is you need an item and you need to do a bunch of different stuff in order to get that item that's kind of like out of the way. And a lot of these are like simple, very mundane things such as, you know, matches or uh, pliers, which is always kind of funny to me. Like you're doing all of this work just to get a pair of pliers. There we go. Also, that's a little nice example of Alyssa's extendo arms. Um, in this game, you have significantly longer reach than the game implies. And we can use that both to grab doorways like that, as well as items later on. Um, that one was a pretty good example of it, but there's one that we're going to notice that is very much uh, like that shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> So we're gonna get another spawn right up here. Um, I think it's like two, if you get it like two doorways away from an enemy, then um, they kind of just like lose interest in you. However, a lot of these spawns are guaranteed, so we're gonna be running up to here in a second. I'm gonna kind of hug this uh, couch just to make sure he doesn't hit me. And again, never happened before, but that should be fine. We'll just use this uh, lavender water as safety. Yeah, Sledgehammer just like knew that I was going to be on GDQ, so he decided to like really make this like annoying for me. Fortunately, the first frame of panic just like cancels you immediately into the panicked run animation. Yeah, the panic run animation is actually faster in some areas. Like when you're going upstairs, uh, it's pretty good because you don't get like this the walking animation. So if you're going upstairs with panic, it actually kind of works out in your favor. So we're going to light the match right over here so we can see over this plank and walk over. Uh, it is completely random uh, how many stumbles you get like that. Uh, I think the lowest I have personally ever seen is uh, like two. Um, however, the lowest I've actually gotten is only three. And it kind of just depends on... I think the way that they, we figured out, like it actually does have a specific way that you can, you know, set this up to get the quote unquote good energy if you wanted to. But essentially it's like a random seed roll that starts from the very beginning of you booting up your console and it's frame perfect. So it's basically impossible to actually uh, manipulate into a favorable pattern for us. Um, also the max that you can get is seven, which is really, really bad. Come on, Alyssa. Yeah, if sometimes like you can get it even at the this very end here and you kind of just like slide off of the edge, which is kind of funny. But um, thankfully that didn't happen and that wasn't too bad. I think that was four. So that's about standard RNG. Here we go. Once we go past Sledgehammer right there, uh, we are pretty much home free to the boss fight. And yes, there are boss fights in this game. Um, they are not as clever as a game like Haunting Ground. Uh, which if you've ever played a lot of uh, boss fights in that game are kind of like puzzles 
where you're supposed to figure out a specific way to manipulate the arena in order to uh, defeat them. Uh, Unless it's not that smart, so we're not going to be doing any uh, creative puzzle solving to defeat the enemies. Um, instead, you know, we're going to use our water bottle, only we're going to be using it in a different way than most other people use their water bottles. That was a really sick line on that catwalk earlier, by the way. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thankfully, the game had some very consistent features about it. Of course, I say that, and we've already gotten some weird patterns from Sledgehammer to just, you know, prove me wrong. But normally, when you're playing this, those aren't an issue. But yeah, if you ever, like, uh, have played Haunting Ground, it's a relatively similar game to this. I would say Haunting Ground is a little bit better uh, casually. However, if you do like that game, this one has a lot of different features towards it. So we're going to head back all the way to Norton's Taylor. Um, and we're also going to see something kind of weird that doesn't pop up in any of the other um, areas we're in. We actually cannot leave this area until he does his full uh, intro into this uh, spot. Which, like, the game just completely bars you from doing it, and I have no idea why. It's the only place I can think of where we encounter that. All right, so we're going to enter into this room. Uh, and we're going to grab a couple items here. We're going to grab the item that we need in order to trigger the boss fight. And we're also going to grab this. This is a, uh, what is called a repellent arrow. And this is going to be useful later on. But for now, we're just going to kind of store it away in our inventory. But um, if you're wondering, wait a minute, why did she just pick up a green glowing arrow? Uh, you'll see, you'll see. Um, I will give you a hint. It has to do with what Agdysis said about this being uh, the horror version of Sailor Moon. Here we go, we get some uh, more information, more backstory uh, about what happened here uh, in the past and what we gotta do to fix all these issues going on. Um, but essentially it's telling us to go back to the theater because we need to get uh, Mace Pocket Watch back to her. Um, we, we talked about spirits earlier, how we had to bring an item to their corpse. It's essentially the same thing for these uh, like main story characters, but just you know a little bit more important and with the subordinate type to it. Interesting to note, this is actually the only uh, Clock Tower game that allows you to use key items while you were being actively chased by a stalker. Yeah, which, thank goodness, because it would be way worse if we couldn't do that. Can't do that in CT1, 2, Haunting Ground, it's just Clock Tower 3. Yep. Well, All what right, about we Ghost Head? Uh, what, what's Ghost Head? I've never heard of that game. Oh, of course. I mean, it's not like they would make a clock tower game without Scissor Man, right? Uh -huh. Oh, wait. There's a, there's another clock tower game. Yeah, I I I can't think of the one that I completely I completely neglected to mention it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm glad I reminded you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, here is the uh, boss fight. We have Sledgehammer. As you can see, he has been sentenced to 486 years. And just like Judge Dredd, uh, Alyssa is going to be giving him some judgment. So we're going to ban out an attack right here. Two, three, four, five. I'm gonna knock him back, get some more distance. And this is where the Sailor Moon aspect comes into play. We are essentially gonna be shooting him with our magical water bottle that's turned into a bow and arrow. Uh, I think it's six times with a five shot. And you can tell by the animation on the arrow. And what this is gonna do is it's going to allow Alyssa to really activate her true powers. Um, but this is gonna be uh, basically what all the boss fights are. And here we go. Channel your energy, Chad. It's a spirit bomb. And then he just dies. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed. I know this, uh, we talked about this being a, a horror game. Uh, however, I do think that basically was a scene from a scary version of Final Fantasy. <laughs> so 
So that is the first box uh, defeated. Sledgehammer has been slain. And as you can see up there, we have been given uh, a water refill. Um, so it's important to note that whenever Alyssa gets a essentially a new upgrade to her water ball and she can carry more, it refills it automatically, which means we don't have to do it again. Then we come over here, we give May her pocket watch back and she goes off on a stairway to heaven with her dad and it's very wholesome and totally not weird at all. Um, this is also in the game, the part where you would actually meet uh, Discount Ron Weasley. I, I, I mean, sorry, sorry, Dennis, Dennis, that's his name. Uh, that's where you beat him in the cutscenes. Uh, unfortunately, we will not see him until very much later into the game. But I will say that if you are interested in a game that is so bad it is good, this is almost a perfect game for that. Um, the cutscenes were actually directed, I can't remember his name, but it's the same person who directed the, uh, the Battle Royale, uh, film. Which was an inspiration uh, for- Kenji Fukatsu- Sorry, Kenji, uh, Fuka Darn, I'm blinking on it too. <laughs> yeah. One sec. Uh, but yeah, it's the guy who made the Battle Royale. Fukasaku. F Fukasaku. Kenji Fukasaku. Yes. Uh, Fukasaku. He made the Battle Royale film, and he's very known for a lot of his samurai and cowboy films. So this game used uh, like very early motion capture, and all the actors are kind of like they're acting like in a, uh, like a theater play. They have like very much these like super exaggerated movements with their hands and bodies and they're like running all around when they don't need to. It's very fun to watch. So you're also wondering why we uh, got teleported back here. Um, the answer to that is Alyssa just passed out and woke up in bed. And uh, that's going to be a very common thing. But we're going to do some more space and time travel really quickly. Um, first of all, we just got to do this little clock tower puzzle. I mean, this is technically a clock tower, right? Like, you know, it's just a very small tower, but still a clock tower. Isn't that just a grandfather clock? It is, but a grandfather clock is a, is a tower with a clock on top. I suppose. I mean, you're the expert in Just Clock Tower back. X, so you sh you would be the uh, the final word of it, but I think it should be considered as one. To circle back to the uh, motion capture momentarily, there's actually a making of that exists somewhere on YouTube, where you can actually see where you can actually see the uh, mocap actors just like doing all the ridiculous movements that you can see in these cutscenes. So if you've played this game before, it's actually very much worth looking up. Yeah. Uh, definitely something that I would recommend. Um, so now we are heading to, ooh, I can't actually remember this, like, very specific area, like what it's called, but we have basically teleported through the use of that. Uh, whenever we have, like, those magical circles that we use to teleport, the main thing about them is you need two waters to activate them. Um, and you need to activate both sides, so if you want to travel back and forth, that's, uh, four water throws total. Um, again, that is not really relevant right now, per se. However, it's going to be relevant later on. Um, but here we are. We're introduced to our next uh, unfortunate victims that we need to save. Um, it's a mother and her son who had something happen to their eyes, so they're completely blind, and they are trying to find each other. And it's going to be up to Alyssa to help them find each other once more. Uh, we, someone is asking in the chat, what is Panic do? Panic essentially is our health bar. So when that bar fills up, Alyssa gets into a state of panic. We uh, lose partial control of Alyssa, meaning that we can't control her as well. Sometimes she'll just stop randomly, which is really bad for us when we're getting chased. And she'll also be able to get killed in one shot, which is also really bad for us. All right, here we go. So this is actually a random prompt. Sometimes it'll be on yes, sometimes it'll be on no. Uh, I don't think at the moment we have any idea why, but uh, we got bad luck right there. So we had to lose uh, one input. Loses us about 0.2 seconds and really that's truly tragic. Here we go. Um, this is also where the game kind of has some weird stuff about it. We are going to be finding a dead body of a photographer. And this game, you know, again, for spirits to move on and to, you know, 
go back into the, you know, move on to the other world. They need an object that is very close to them to be returned and that like truly completes them. And of course, this game has a photographer, so obviously their entire life was only about photography and nothing else. So we need to find some film to bring back to this person. And, you know, the way that we're going to do that, instead of searching around or, you know, going to a nearby store, um, Alyssa is going to abuse her magical powers of space and time and return back to the teleporter to go back to her house to pick it up. Because that makes perfect sense. Also, we get a little cutscene right there where Alyssa sees her mom and she finds an object on the ground. Uh, this is going to be another great example of extendo arms that Alyssa has. Uh, as you can see here, there's going to be a sparkling item on the ground, and we're just going to pick it up right here. It's a very impressive reach. I do want to uh, add to that. Uh, still not the most impressive one that we're going to be seeing uh, later on, however. Also, I will say, uh, this music goes from really high highs to really low lows, uh, and this is one of the really low lows of the time. Uh, for whatever reason, this game has some like very good music in uh, certain aspects, especially like the battle music when you're fighting at bosses, and then the ambiance music when nothing is really going on is absolutely terrible. <laughs> um, thankfully, this isn't the worst track. I'll point that one out later on. Um, Agdysis, would you like to explain, uh, where we are going right now and who, who we're going to be running into later on? Uh, yeah, right now we're going to our grandfather, uh, Dick's desk to get out a mask. I believe you got the key, right? Yes. Cool. There's always, like, two parts, there's, like, two trips here, and I always, like, just fuse the two. But yeah, we got this, uh, it says Dick's desk key earlier. And you get a mask, and this is lets you go to a back room with like a library, which lets you go back to the other area because they kept a roll of film in a secret library. This game's full of the hey, you need the random item to just do one thing to unlock a door, and that's all it does. You like the whole thing you're doing here is moving a picture frame. That's it. Yep. And even though it's very obvious that the picture frame needs to be moved because it's crooked, unless it's just like, huh, it's crooked. Anyway, instead of like actually fixing it, which I have never understood. And even in my casual playthrough, I was very confused because like I, I knew that there must have been something behind the very obvious crooked uh, picture on the wall and she just doesn't want to move it. Um, if you thought Resident Evil was bad with this, like really cryptic stuff that people were hiding, uh, Clock Tower has a beat. But yeah, um, Alyssa, I do want to mention, Alyssa really loves her grandfather, um, who has been missing for a little while now. She's very upset about that, um, but that is something to know is she has a very close relationship with her grandfather. But um, now that we got the film, I might want to mention early 2000s film, uh, and this guy died in like, what, 1960? So I'm sure the cameras work just fine together with it. Probably. <laughs> so... We're going to head back on over. Yeah, unfortunately, this is kind of the like most boring part of the run for the simple fact that it's such a long stretch where we're actually not being chased by any enemies. Like for the most part, when you're going through this game, you are actively being sought after by uh, the subordinates pretty much 90% of the time. So this is like the longest stretch where just no enemies are trying to kill us, really. You have some of these spirit guys, but really, I don't count them. They're very easy to avoid, and if they do grab you, it's not a big deal at all. But here we go. This is going to be another uh, ghost that we have to return something to. There, so we give him the film. He moves on. He's like, thank you. That's what I needed. I needed more film. And we find some pictures on the ground that give us a hint that, hey, the very obvious thing that was like super apparent the entire time. Uh, yeah, it turns out, you know, there's a switch under that. So now that we have done that, we can actually go outside to the rest of the abandoned house. Also, don't worry about that door. It's totally fine. There we go. All right. Um, I'm not going to show the cutscene 
However, there's a really funny one that I know Egg likes to show, and I know he's going to be mad at me for not doing it. But this is the introduction of Corroder. Um, Corroder is probably the hardest like enemy in the entire game, or at least the hardest supported in terms of the f uh, boss fight and actually chasing us. Um, we essentially have to be very careful because he'll do certain attacks, which will basically we don't have a response to. Um, and that was almost one of them. Another thing to know is when you hit an enemy with a uh, like a water or if you're doing it during the boss fight, it'll actually stop the attack from doing damage. So it doesn't interrupt the attack. It'll just negate the damage that it would do completely like right there. How do you like the acid bath? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was perfect. I would say if you want to watch the cutscene, I know all three of us do this game. Uh, Demonic might be running this more after this. You can follow him on twitch.tv slash demonic robots to watch the cutscenes. It's uh, pretty good. Mm hmm. So we're going to come back up here, and this is going to be a abuse basically of the. Uh, IGT frames that we get. An enemy has to like fully enter a room before like it'll really attack you. So we wait for him to come like that. We scroll through and now we don't have to worry about him. Um, this upcoming area though is a little bit scary. So I'm gonna do a quick water refill that I normally don't do. Uh, this is a line that is completely random. Sometimes you'll get hit, sometimes you won't. Um, sometimes you'll hit them with the water, sometimes you won't as well. Uh, overall, it's like pretty much random. We're gonna do a quick refill there. And then hopefully we can hit him like this. There we go, perfect. You can also go straight for it and just hope that you don't get hit at all and don't waste the water. However, it's pretty rare and pretty hard to hit, so we're not gonna be doing that. And also his butt bounce is very, very hard to avoid. Mm -hmm, exactly, he will butt bounce you and that is very dangerous for Alyssa. Reminder, this is a horror game. Yep, you're supposed to be scared, <laughs> chat. I hope you're scared. He's doing the wrestling, like, uh, who was that one guy, like Rikishi or Mark Henry? I don't remember the one. Like, one of them had the, the slam. Oh, I'm terrible with the wrestling names. I only know Rey Mysterio and The Undertaker. There's also Gold Dust. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Corroder's not as good of a wrestler as those guys, though, so we're going to be avoiding him. Also going to be avoiding that spirit. And we're coming up to a safety area. So, again, this is just an area where he just for whatever reason, doesn't want to actually uh, run into us and follow us down here. But we are coming up onto his boss fight, and his boss fight is the worst one because there really is no manipulation. Like, every other boss fight we do, we kind of have a specific way of doing it. And this one is basically just be good at the game and do your absolute best and hope you don't get bad RNG. It's also where we're going to be introduced to the uh, most dangerous mechanic that bosses have in this game, and that is sidestepping. Whenever you press the aim button, you hold down the button and then it releases the arrow when you let it go. Uh, however, when you hold down the button, Alyssa will aim automatically at the boss, and you're not able to change your position as you are charging up your arrow. So you really commit to that uh, angle whenever you hold down the button, or yeah, whenever you hold down the button and enemies will like to sidestep away in order to avoid you hitting them. And this is where uh, it becomes most apparent because Corroder likes to do this a lot. Sometimes if you have already bound them, you can kind of get away with it and they'll kind of uh, end up back in like your sights. However, most of the time you just have to loose an arrow, take the miss and then uh, continue on. But here we go. <laughs> Gonna get another little introduction to the fight. And this is where it's gonna get a little bit scary. So hopefully it works out. Um, another thing that we want to not have happen is we don't want to have Corroder get bound too early uh, because we want to get down his health as much as we can before then. Um, the way that the game intends for you to do this is you're supposed to get a bind on one side, a bind on the other side, and a bind in the middle. However, we just try to get as many as we can. Two, three. Uh, it's also worth noting that uh, you see that I'm doing like these very specific charges. Uh, you need at least three charges total to interrupt, and you need at least uh, six to actually cause a bind. And you're going to see I'm going to be doing some shots when I get to three. Oh, there's a sidestep. Uh, let's see if he gets back into my angle. No, he's not going to. We're going to do a little duck right there. There she is. 
That's good. We want to hear him do the little taunt, and hopefully he runs towards us and not away from us. Nice. There she is. No, no, get back there in front of us. Is. Can we hit that? Nope. That's fine. That should not hit us. Cool. There she is. Oh. This is all completely there random is. as well. Um, sometimes he'll give us a really good pattern. Other times he will just uh, basically make us miserable. Uh, come on, Corroder. Get in my way. There we go. I also usually like him to be a little bit closer than this because the arrow is actually very slow traveling. So it makes it kind of harder to interrupt those ranged attacks that he has. But there we go. This is kind of working out pretty well for us. Spirit bomb imminent. There we go. That actually might kill. I think so. I guess we'll find out after this. It's definitely going to kill him. Yeah. It's like, what, 60% damage for the, uh, for every spirit bomb? Just about, yeah. And there he is. Corroder has been defeated. My favorite part of Corroder is that his, uh, when he has water touch his body, he ignites on fire like most gamers. <laughs> I was thinking about making that joke earlier, and I was like, nah, I probably shouldn't, but... Yeah. I always make that joke. <laughs> so, that was a pretty good fight, and we actually didn't want the Spirit Bomb to happen too quickly, because otherwise, if you have it happen too quickly, you can accidentally do two of them, and it's a very long animation. Um, as, as much as I love that, if I could skip it, I would, so I'm not just, like, showing you guys the uh, the Spirit Bomb attack just to, like, you know because it's a marathon and it looks cool. It's like unskippable. So we only want to do like one at most. Otherwise you lose time. But we're going to come back into uh, this little room, uh, give that old lady her, her shawl back and she reunites with her son and they, uh, they live happily ever after. Definitely nothing else that bad happens. So now we're going to be introduced to Chopper. Chopper is one of my least favorite ones, um, but I do want to give a fun fact that you can't really notice in the speed run, and that is that he has two completely different voice actors. Uh, one for the cutscene and one for the gameplay. I have no idea why, and it's not even like it's two different voice actors trying to do the same voice inflection. They are both going for two completely different things, and it's really funny to me because of that. But we are heading... Actually, I never noticed that at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they are completely two different voice actors. One is for when you're being chased, and then the other one is for cutscenes only, except for the very last cutscene. For some reason, the very last cutscene is the uh, the voice actor during the gameplay. I'm not sure if that is the same thing in the Japanese version, um, but that is definitely something in this one. So we're going to get introduced to him very quickly. Uh, he is very dangerous. Um, and thankfully, though, like we have very uh, specific ways of actually fighting him um, and going around him. So that's kind of the good part about it. Corroder like is very much like can kind of be a little bit finicky in some areas. Um, Chopper, if you know what you're doing and you play it right, he is almost 100 percent consistent. So we're going to head up to here. We Basically, what we're going to be trying to do is we're going to try to be restoring the power and finding a key card to unlock the door. Um, and that requires us to do a bunch of different stuff in order to handle that. Uh, because, again, this game very much likes to make finding normal everyday objects an absolute struggle. Okay, I got to listen right here. So he's going to come up onto us right here. We're going to try and get him up against this wall so we can avoid his hit because we need to go back around. Find these rubber gloves. Ah, that's not great. I think we should be able to be fine though. Yep. Uh, come on, throw a catch. Nope, that's fine. 
Uh, Chopper is one of the, uh, like, first killers where we actually run into him throwing ranged attacks at us during the chase scenes. Normally before in the hand, we've only had Corroder uh, do it during the boss fights, but he will actually do it when we're being chased. Which uh, isn't great. Here we go, we have another set spawn of him. I'm gonna try and enter into this area like that. Uh, not great, I normally like to get closer to the box. However, we should be okay. Hopefully, this should be fine. Okay, we didn't get any panic from that, so that's good. And thankfully we do have a backup item, so I'm not too worried. Um, our item route is actually very specific. Menuing in this game takes a very long time because it's an old school PS2 game, so it, it essentially takes a long while to open up the menu, use an item, and close it. So we try to, to basically make it so we only do it once in the run, once or twice during the run. Um, however, you know, this is a marathon run, so saving seconds like that uh, isn't as important. We're gonna do this little puzzle. It's also worth noting that we don't need to know the solution for that puzzle to actually do it, which is really nice because it's the only puzzle in the entire game where we can have like, you know, knowledge that we actually, uh, you know, if we know what the actual solution, excuse me, then we can actually do it. And also, if you are wondering, no, this is not the Scissor Man. I promise we'll run into him, um, which is both a good and bad thing. <laughs> Um, let's just say that if you're a fan of the old Scissor Man, you're probably not going to like this one. I like his top knot. He has a cool haircut. <laughs> yeah. Also, this is the ghost that I relate to the most. Uh, their missing item was their glasses, which are about five feet away from them. So they've been in the like stuck in the spirit world trying to look for their glasses. And they were basically right in front of them the entire time. And as a person who wears glasses and is completely blind without them, I can really relate to this character. Rest in peace, Velma. It's really tragic. We go we're gonna grab this we're gonna come back up onto the ladder and we're gonna get a little jump scare from chopper um, most of these jump scares are uh oh that was actually kind of close most of these jump scares are scripted so we don't have to worry about that too much but now that we have gotten all the appropriate items we just need to turn on the power and uh, continue on back into our mansion. But our mansion is going to be uh, looking a little bit different from last we saw it because last time we saw it was during a cutscene where a person called the Dark Man destroyed our house and caused a giant clock tower to appear with us uh, basically flying around on a magical spinning clock. And again, if you are wondering how that makes any sense whatsoever, I would highly recommend that you watch the cutscenes. You can't get away! Alright, so we got bad RNG. He's gonna be in front of us. I'm gonna give it a little bit of uh, safety. When you're coming around these uh, corners, they can basically rush up right against you, and it's very scary to do blind. So I try to get like optimal camera angles where I can see that he's approaching before I actually uh, throw the water. Because otherwise, you can get hit or you can miss it. Um, the game kind of auto aims your water for you, but it can be kind of weird. So we're going to throw it right there just to make sure that we're like guaranteed to actually hit him. And now we should be able to uh, move on. And then someone was wondering uh, if you uh, need to reduce your panic. There are items for that, uh, specifically the lavender water for it. Um, there is also another item that we picked up earlier. Uh, which is called the Invisible Ring, and that turns us temporarily invisible. Uh, this is also gonna be the uh, most obvious use of the Extendo Arms. You see that green arrow? We need that. However, we're just gonna pick it up right here. So, for whatever reason, uh, item hitboxes have a infinitely uh, vertical height to it. Because for the most part, you're not going to be picking up objects like uh, like that one very often that are placed under things that you can access. Uh, that one is the exception. But here we go. We're going to be starting the first uh, chopper fight. This one is actually the easiest one, uh, I would say, or at least the quickest one, because we don't need to uh, kill him completely. We just need to get a bind to summon a spirit bomb onto him.
Also, again, this music is absolutely amazing. I love it. So hopefully he'll give us a good pattern. Again, we need six charges on our arrow uh, in order to bind him. Um, we also kind of want him to, uh, say, catch at us and then throw one of his axes because we can knock it back into him and that makes uh, this bind a little bit faster. I don't think he's going to give it to us, but this is actually looking like a very decent pattern. So I will take that. Uh, pretty straightforward because this is the only angle that he can attack you if he's bound. Yeah, so, sometimes he'll like rush straight towards you, which is very dangerous. But once you get that first bind off, it um, becomes significantly easier. Um, and I am going to apologize. This is where the start of the worst soundtrack in the entire game begins. Um, if you were thinking that you had tinnitus, I promise that you don't. There's no mosquitoes buzzing around in your room. It's just this game soundtrack. Um, but just spooky theremin. That's all. Exactly. Um, so there, Alyssa saw her uh, her ancestors. They were all rooters that died to a subordinate. I think specifically they died to Chopper. Um, my lore is a little a little weird here. So our goal is to find an item that relates to these older uh, rooters that were related to Alyssa. And we need to go to two different areas to uh, find a compass of light and a compass of shadow. Uh, we're going to go to this one first. This is the mausoleum. This is the easiest one because we are not going to be chased after by Chopper, which is really, really important. So it's kind of a good time during the run to basically just like relax, take a, a second to breathe because we're coming up to the hardest chase area uh, up next. So there are three ghosts here, uh, red, yellow and blue. And we need to put the appropriate rooter stone with the appropriate ghost. Um, the thing is, the uh, Alyssa can only carry one at a time, so we have to like gather these in specific ways. Um, so we're gonna pick up that one, and then we're gonna go set it over here on this pillar, and then essentially you're kind of just gonna be moving these stones around onto their appropriate uh, settings. Go refill our water. And yeah, unfortunately, there's not too much this area. However, we do pick up some more ruder arrows. So these arrows that I have been picking up, uh, there are two kinds, a repellent arrow and a binding arrow. These are special arrows that do two different properties. The green ones will knock the uh, bosses backwards, and the binding arrow will do basically a six charge bind against the enemies immediately. Um, it's also worth noting that whenever you pick up these arrows, you have to use them in the order that you pick them up in. Meaning you can't cycle through them and choose a binding arrow unless the last arrow you picked up was a binding arrow. So it's very important that during this route, we pick up the arrows in the specific order that we intend to use them for. We haven't used them up to this point because they're kind of rare to get. Like we pretty much get almost every single arrow uh, in the entire game. And even then it's still just barely enough. So because of that, um, we want to save them and we save them for uh, a few bosses. This first one that we're going to be using it on is going to be for Chopper 2. And what it does is it essentially allows us to do a uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to elicit a ranged attack from Chopper 2 and using a repellent arrow here guarantees that we get that ranged attack immediately. I, I hate this song so much. <laughs> it's also during a very quiet part of the run too, so all you could hear is just the tinnitus going off. So we're gonna return back to our favorite blue ghost. Um, also, yeah, splashing ghosts with holy water totally stuns them. Again, I have no idea why. I, I, I have a lot of questions about this game's lore. Um, and sadly, I don't think they'll ever be answered. Honestly, I just kind of take this game at face value. <laughs> <laughs> it's enjoyable. That's about. That's about. That's about the. That's about the only way to, you know, 
prevent yourself from thinking about it too hard. Let's just take it at face value. Yeah. So a better question about the song, uh, lads, would you play this song in your car? Would be bumping it while driving? <laughs> oh, I would be head bobbing. I would be, you know. Oh, of course. <laughs> Put it on loop. Just imagine you be able to tell, like, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Just imagine. I feel like I would be committing an FCC violation. <laughs> like your your buddies, like. You know, you've been begging to get the aux cord from them for so long, and they're like, fine, we'll give it to you this one time. This better be a banger. And you played this song over the speakers. So there we go. We have placed all of the rooter stones in the appropriate spot. So now we can go grab the compass and uh, continue on. And we're almost out of this horrendous music area. It's going to be ending soon, I promise, chat. Um, if it continues on, once we run into Chopper, that is just tinnitus, do not worry about it. <laughs> Here we go, I'm gonna refill our water. This is the area where it gets very scary. We're coming up onto a chase area where we're gonna be chased around by Chopper, and we need to do a lot of backtracking, and it's a very open area without any doorways or really any ways that we can get the invincibility, and we cannot use a single water. Um, the reason for that is because we need to use four of them to activate the teleporter and one of them to activate a key item, which is very, very bad for us because there aren't any spots to refill your water here. Um, I don't know why they made this so difficult casually and it makes the speed run very difficult. So this is why we've been picking up a majority of the items and it's this is the only spot where during an actual PB attempt, I would only use my items in this graveyard area. Um, every speedrunner has a different way of doing this, however, it's just completely random. Um, sometimes you'll get lucky, sometimes you won't. Um, I think I've been able to get through here a couple times using only one item, but normally I use three or two. Um, I'm not sure if Egg has any other luck with his strats, but it really just kind of comes down to how uh, Chopper is feeling for the evening. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the invisibility rings. I think I grabbed one of the extra ones that doesn't normally get grabbed just going for record. Yeah. So what I do here is I wait for his attack to start. Oh, we have three Lavender Rs. We'll be totally good. And I use the Invisible Ring for both to uh, oh, avoid nice him trick. actually uh, finishing his panic and to also uh, kind of get him off of us for at least a little while. So we need to press uh, these three buttons in the order of their eyes. So the one-eyed lion, the two-eyed lion, the three-eyed lion. See, where is he? Okay, he missed us. Throw something at us. No, that's fine. Um, I'm trying to bait him out onto one side so I can loop around the other. Because otherwise he can kind of get you stuck. Okay, okay. we're fine. Alright, that's actually good. We want him to throw things at us because it does not build panic unless it hits us. And it also kind of gets him away. I also have to He's also completely immobilized until the uh, projectile is finished. Is that correct? Yes. I'm gonna throw that right here. So far he's giving us good luck. I'm kind of just waiting till the very last moment to actually use my lavender water, just to get like the most I can out of it. So we're gonna wait until he tries to do an attack. Yeah, I'm gonna use it now in case he does his weird uh, stair shuffle to smack me. So as you can see, also, when you are being swung at and you have your lavender water going, it basically just uh, avoids you taking any more. But now we are on our way back. You want to be careful. These gravestones will actually, like, get you stuck, and that is very bad. I think we are golden. Ooh, that was really, really good. Normally, that fight can be uh, a little dangerous. We got the uh, two compasses that we're going to be inserting. It's also worth noting that this upcoming fight is, I think, the first fight where we defeat the enemy, but because we don't get a water upgrade, we don't actually... Um, we don't actually get a refill on it, so we'll need to refill later on. And of course, we got another teleporter going through. 
this one teleports us to an underground cave and it also hints at some upcoming bosses later on. Uh, I, I can't remember the name of this guy. Uh, he's, I think he's pretty important in the Clock Tower series, kind of. Ah, it has something to do with, like, blades. Blade Man, that's right. Blade Man, yeah, yeah. Blade Runner, is, is that what it is? Nice ah, I can't boy. remember. <laughs> but, yeah. So, we have a golden arrow here. We're not going to actually be using it to fight any enemies. Um, I remember my original playthrough, I was, like, going to use this on the final boss. Because it looks like an item that you would, you know used to fight the enemies but uh no it's just a key item so we don't actually use it in combat and really that's a big uh misstep we also find what i think is our, our first binding arrow uh which again is used in the very last boss fight also have a little bit of a uh a chase scene here with the uh, rocks collapsing. I have never died here, and if I ever do, I have uh, said that I will never play this game again. So, so far that hasn't happened, and it's not going to happen this time. Um, Ignisus, do you want to explain the strategy that we're going to be doing here? Sounds good. All right, so we're the boss for right now at Chopper. Um, this boss is kind of weird because, as you know from the last time, he was kind of blocking a lot of the hits. Uh, he'll continue that, so you have to be very careful when we get into this fight. Um, the cutscene's about a end I, I think uh i don't actually There's a know. lot of stop and starting with the cutscenes <laughs> there we go okay I, I couldn't tell that was longer than usual anyway we're getting into the chopper fight once again we're gonna skip the little bar now the way it's gonna work is if you try shooting early chopper will actually block any hit you give him um normally what you have to do is um what the monarchs have to do is you hit one of the green arrows they're a uh, reflecting arrow wait till he gets really close and is about to a strike uh, and that will knock him back uh, then he's oh. going to... Oh, oh, wait a minute. I think All I'm good. Just back a little here. too early. All good. Um, so what was supposed to happen there, and you can still do it, is after he kind of blocks enough damage, so to speak, usually based on proximity and, oh, nice you know, trick. hit, um, he'll want to throw an axe. Uh, that's what the hitting the green arrow right on time would have done. Uh, we are going to have to run around a little bit more and kind of get to a position to work, which they're getting right now. You hear catch. You need a three charge binding in order to reflect that. Once you reflect a hit, it's really easy straight. You're just going to get full six oh, charge okay. bindings once again. Uh, we did miss one, so that's a bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, this yeah. fight can still work. A little bit of a mix up. But that's yeah, how it's going to work. Normally, this fight goes a little bit better. I actually might just take a death here and restart the fight really quick. If you can hit me. Yeah, uh, this is why we do that uh, with the repellent oh, arrow, because it makes it significantly more consistent. So we're just going to, you know, take a couple of hits here. Should be so only now, one uh, or two more hits. We're just going for the nice continue to get back to the repellent arrow. Yeah, because you actually can't, like, do a restart from checkpoint. You have to die to get a continue. So that's fine, though. We'll be able to show it off. Um, it's kind of a rat and pander because we need to wait until he like runs at us because otherwise he might sidestep. And then we also need to wait for the attack. And he decided to walk and then taunt towards us, which is really not good. So let's try this again. And hopefully he'll actually do what we need him to properly do, which is run at us and swing. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we haven't really gone over this yet. I'd love to talk about this because it's being ass. It looks so hard to control. Uh, oh, yeah. So you can't actually aim. Uh, back in the year 2003, aiming in video games wasn't a thing. Uh, every time you aim the bow, it auto aims to the boss's location. Uh, this makes every fight much harder than it should be. There's one boss that doesn't have auto aiming, and we're, we'll get to that later. But uh, you'll notice that whenever uh, Demonic aims, they will always aim towards the boss. That's not demonic um, aiming at the boss, that's demonic just pushing the aim button and the game automatically does that. You also can't move while aiming. Once you pick a direction, you're going in that direction. Isn't it a wonderful game? Anyway, that's how it's supposed to look like. We get the green arrow, we're able to get these bindings. Um, ideally, we actually want to be able to reflect uh, more of these axes because it's going to do a good chunk of damage and it's going to allow us to get more damage. As Carsey mentioned earlier, um, the spirit bomb will do about a, about 60%. So you kind of want to get enough damage to right when you hit the spirit bomb, it's going to lead to the end of the fight. But you, very often you might end up having a little bit more or a bit of an overkill. So getting a just the right sweet spot for this chopper fight is immensely important. Uh, we should be getting the Spirit Bomb bot now, so chat, lend your energy! There it is! Type, I don't know, E, if you want to lend your energy. Or, energy. if you're a sub to Agdices, Agdices Magic is also a great one. 
I do have a magical girl emote, that is correct. Let's see if he dies. Good fight. Yeah, yeah. Very That's good fight. more like it. Yeah, definitely made up for uh, him giving us an annoying pattern earlier. And also, the good thing is now that we have defeated uh, our our boy Chopper, uh, we get to meet somebody special. And in chat, if you've played this game, you know who we're meeting, and I'm sure you're just as excited as I am. Make a uh, quick correction, though, on the uh, spirit bomb spirit bomb damage. Yes, it does depend on uh, it does depend on the boss. Uh, oh, hold on! It's discount Ron Weasley. Will take Look at him! Look at that run cycle! Ah, <laughs> uh, always good to see him around. I don't know why he's not yeah. hanging out in Harry Potter's films, but but uh, as you were saying, Carsey. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Discount Ron Weasley was way, way more important than anything <laughs> I had to say right at that very moment in it time. Was. I, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but like I, as I was saying, um, the uh, the amount of damage that uh, enemies bosses take, uh, it just depends on the boss. I mean, even though it's like the same weapon, it's pretty, it's pretty consistent game logic across different Capcom games that different weapons will just do different amounts of damage depending on the enemy. Like they just have like different uh, fixed amounts of damage or different fixed ranges of damage, but in the case of Clock Tower, um, the uh, sixty percent that I was referring to was specifically during um, specifically during the Corroder fight. But in that case, it does take like maybe about maybe about seventy percent of of uh, no maybe maybe more like sixty fifty five percent of uh, Chopper's health bar, but. Whenever we get into like other boss fights, they're uh, probably going to take more or less damage, depending. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure the spirit bomb damage is like for like for a given enemy is going to be fixed. It, it's very weird, and we again we don't want to do two spirit bombs. We only want to do one, so a chopper we're reliant on him doing his ranged throws because we actually want him to do that since. You know, they do a lot of damage against him, and it makes it so we pretty much can do what we did right there, where once we get a spirit bomb, he's dead, and we don't have to, you know, chunk down the rest of his health. Too many spirit bombs takes up too much time. Yeah. Um, Carsey, would you like to explain this area and the uh, the main gimmick about it? Well, the uh, main gimmick in it is that there is a mirror world. In one side of the mirror world, you find Scissor Man Ralph. In the other side, you find Scissor Woman Jemima. And uh, each uh, there's certain items that you can pick up in one area that can be used in the other area and vice versa. Yep, so this is... But, uh, you know, the, regu the regular world, there's, there's, there's Scissor Man Ralph. And now we're on the other side of the mirror. And uh, now we got to run away from Scissor Woman Jemima. Yeah, if this is like the same, uh, the same hospital room just mirrored, and uh, demonic needs to pick up an item from here. Oh, not right here. We actually to need to just to throw open. that right there, and then it should be uh, unlocked on the other side. Right, actually. Sorry, it has been about it has been about a couple of years since the last time I played this game. For sure. This area can be very confusing because of the mirrored section. Also, that's going to be a great example right there of us canceling taking uh, any panic because we got to the door in time. So because it applies it at the end of our animation, it uh, gives us like a little bit of a safety window. See what kind of pattern she gives us as she's entering the bathroom. Uh, this should be a little dangerous. Look, this should be fine. There we go. Sometimes she'll like run forward and dodge it. Um, but thankfully, we can actually throw the water through that wall right there and hit her. We want to try and end this area with at least two waters because we have to have a teleporter. It's not a huge deal if we don't, but uh, it does save a little bit of time. There we go. We got two keys out of the three required, and we got the uh, the safe pattern from Scissor Man right there. Also, if you've played the other clock towers and Scissor Man looks a little bit different, I don't have an explanation. <laughs> I think it was literally just they designed these characters and then called them Scissor Man afterwards because Capcom's like, wait a minute, it's Clock Tower. Um, but yeah, again, I love this game. It's so bad it's good. But I will say that if you want an actual good successor to Clock Tower, um, Haunting Ground is going to be the better option. It's showtime. Ow, 
But there we go. That is going to be the hospital section. Uh, we actually don't fight uh, Scissor Man and Scissor Woman just yet. We'll be running into them later on. I think this is the only area that we technically don't ever like fight a boss in afterwards. Uh, excuse me? There we go. That was weird. Normally it just uh, goes through immediately, but that's fine. Uh, and Dices, do you remember the lore for this part? The lore? Uh, I think even taken to the actual clock tower mansion uh, that they kind of showed off earlier. Finally back, because they threw in like the sewers of it. So yes, uh, you're so... dealing with your, uh, well, they don't tell you yet who the big bad is, but it's pretty obvious there's like three characters in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is kind of where it uh, starts to get revealed that your grandfather, not that good of a guy. But first, we have to actually get into here. We're going to wait for uh, Ralph to get closer. Um, normally, I would do a strategy here that involves us getting one less... Uh, like, water refill. However, I'm just gonna play it safe. So, just, uh, hit him with the holy water and, uh, go on. I'm also gonna do a little bit of safety strat, which I think that every runner should do. Um, this is the only evade point that we use that isn't a required one. Um, and like I said earlier, evade points are basically a one-off time that you can essentially get rid of a chaser that's chasing you. So we have to come over this way um, and find a note that says that there's a loose metal bar in the castle and we need to actually take that metal bar and then go through it. Um, if we go to the area with the metal bar uh, without this note, she won't realize that it's loose and we won't be able to actually continue. Here we go. We're going to use the evade point right there. It's going to cause uh, Ralph to lunge at us and he's going to fall off on a like broken piece of concrete. Um, I will say, try to find cutscenes of the evade points because some of them are absolutely like literally from a Looney Tunes uh, cartoon scene. They are so funny every time. So we're going to head over here back into the main hall, which again, this song is absolutely amazing. And look, it's 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 kind of the clock tower. It's kind of the thing that the game is named after. So in all fairness uh, to the game, uh, when we get to the sewer level, uh, they're actually, they actually do see a clock tower for like a brief moment in a cutscene when you're writing it before they knock you down into the sewer. Yeah, the cutscene is really cool, but uh, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's slow to watch it, so we tend to skip it. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, to catch up on the lore, by the way, um, essentially, our grandfather is a bad dude. He is not a cool person, and he needs to complete a ritual involving a rooter, as is Alyssa, who gains her, she's like her strongest when she is 15, and then slowly wanes down as she ages. And if he, uh, basically, he's trying to become a mortal, and to do that, he needs to complete a ritual and kill Alyssa in order to gain immortality as an entity. So he was searching for that for quite a while, and he came across the Burroughs uh, Castle. Not to be confused with the Burroughs from the other Clock Tower games, these are different Burroughs. Just like this character, Alyssa, is different from the other Alyssa in the other Clock Tower game. And you can kind of see where this game, uh, this game just is weird. I, I don't know how, like a better way to explain it. <laughs> I don't know why there's like two sets of Burroughs families, both with different spellings, and there are two main characters who are named Alyssa. But yeah, our grandfather's trying to become immortal and he needs to kill us in order to do it. And our goal is to stop him. We're also gonna come up here. We need to grab a couple of crests. We're gonna find this first one right here. And again, more extended arms. We're just gonna use our ash pile to throw that right there. And then we're gonna mash during this like little segment to hit uh, scissor woman, not scissor man. To get the A crust. Thankfully, though, we are almost done with the actual chase sections. Um, once we uh, shake off Scissor Woman here, we actually won't need to do them anymore, which is nice.
So we're going to move a candlestick, and for whatever reason, that shows off a secret doorway to a office that we need to go to later on. Again, I don't know why they just, like, hide something, like, very obvious like that. But, uh, you know, I didn't design this castle. If you're in architecture, uh, let me know the mechanics that would go into moving a candlestick to open up a doorway. Also, something that's always bothered me is the fact that these characters are very obviously able to teleport in order to flank Alyssa. Why don't they just teleport behind her, do the nothing personal kid thing, and just kill her that way? Instead of, like, doing it to get, like, funny jump scares. Well, it's all based on entertainment. They're like Harlequins, so it only works if they're entertaining. That is true. You know... They say if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life. And that really applies to these subordinates because they are all just so happy to try and murder you. It's almost endearing in a way to see how giddy they get when they're close to killing you. All right. There we go, our last little water throw, and we should be clear of the chasers for the uh, the rest of the game. Um, so if you're missing that mechanic, uh, I do apologize. You come over here, place the crest into that. Then we're going to come over onto this way. Put the crest in there. And that should properly unlock the door and open up the painting and allow us to go to the secret office. And again, once we get through this doorway, uh, for whatever reason, Scissor Woman is just like, oh, I can't really follow that much farther. And uh, she stops trying to chase after us. And there we go. So this is kind of a lore dump. Um, there's two areas where we get like a bunch of cutscenes back to back that we just have to skip through, and this is one of them. The other one was earlier, which we call the cutscene hallway. So we're gonna get a cutscene there. We're gonna look at this book. Gonna grab the the D crest, and this is a huge lore dump. But basically, uh, what is going on right now with you know Alyssa, her mom, her grandfather, all of that stuff has kind of happened in the past. Um, and it's kind of like trying to do a history repeating itself. And we find out that Dennis is currently being held by Scissor Man and Scissor Woman. And we got to save our boy Dennis. Uh, so we're going to do exactly that. Because, you know, Dennis is a real bro. Um, he's not, you know, as magical as Ron Weasley. But, you know, he still has heart. Um, I also just realized that there's a D crest, an A crest, and an N crest. I'm not sure if that is a reference to... I think his, his name is Dan, right? In, in the other clock yeah, towers? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, Dan, I'm not sure if that's a uh, reference or whatever, ours. but... <laughs> it also spells and. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Whoops. That's fine, though. It's actually directly related to the... Uh to the uh, characters and Alyssa's family and uh, their ancestors. So you have uh, Darcy Burroughs and then the other characters who are named A and uh, A and N. I don't remember what their names were. Uh, yeah. I don't know the ancestors, but also, wait, what's Alyssa's mom's name again? Nancy. Nancy. Yeah, you have Dick, Alyssa, and Nancy. A for, yep. But also the Dan is definitely a reference to that. I also do want to mention that the Burroughs in the original sure clock towers is spelled with uh, O-W-S at the end, whereas these Burroughs are O-U-G-H-S. Like, uh, originally I had this huge little theory that, like, oh, you know, uh, Mary from the first game was a entity and her subordinate was the Scissor Man, her son, but uh, nope, that, that, that's... That would have made it too much sense. That would have been like actually a good idea. But uh, sadly, this game doesn't really have that many of those. So here we are. We're going to be arriving to the arena with Scissor Man and Scissor Woman. However, we can't fight them just yet. We don't have our magical item to turn our water bottle into a bow and arrow. 
So we're gonna have to go find that item first and basically just kind of check in on Dennis, make sure he's doing okay. Cause you know, again, um, he's currently strapped to a table with a giant saw over him. Um, if you're a fan of the saw games, uh, this is probably the closest that you're gonna get to that in this, uh, in this area. There we go. We got our item with us. Uh, that was Alyssa's drawings because, again, her grandfather does kind of care for Alyssa. He, he's kind of actually upset that he has to do it, but, you know, when he's given the option of getting immortality, he's like, eh, it, it's worth killing my granddaughter over. Also, sadly, we have to skip the cutscene. Again, the cutscenes in this game are objectively amazing, and I'll fight anybody that says otherwise. <laughs> Also, if you get hit by any of these axes, you die immediately. Like, it's literally just game over unless you have a sigil stone. So be very, very careful when you're going through that area. All right, uh, do you want to describe this upcoming fight, uh, Dysis? Sure. Uh, so we're gonna actually have a two-part fight coming up right now. Uh, once again, we're gonna be fighting the, uh, the scissor siblings, as they're called. Uh, we have uh, Scissor Woman Jemima and Scissor Man Ralph. Uh, Ralph's gonna be a more traditional fight, so I'll get to that when we get to that, but Jemima's gonna be very unique. I talked earlier when we were on the chopper fight that with Scissor Woman Jemima, she's the only enemy in the game where auto-aim isn't a thing. It's really weird, because normally they'll always aim directly at the enemy. However, this one, I guess the gimmick is that she's more mobile, so they kind of want you to aim at her. Uh, her fight's really easy, though, because we've been saving all of these green and red arrows. Uh, so we're going to use two greens for this fight. Uh, the first one is going to be on her first spawn position, and the second one will be on her second spawn position. So here's the first aim. Uh, Demok's going to aim right there. Uh, Jemima will run. Uh, Jemima's hit. She'll vanish. And then uh, Demok will aim again. And hey, look, she's dead. Perfect. Yeah, that fight can be a little scary if your angle is off. Um, you will miss your arrow, and it's very hard to recover that. I actually had no idea that her spawn positions were fixed yep. like that. It'll well, always yep. be those two spots. Uh, you can yeah, get a bit greedy and uh, try to actually hit her like right on like the spawn point, but usually you want to do what Demonic did, where you kind of wait for her to run to you. Um, yeah. Going into Scissorman Ralph, though, um, this is going to be a weird fight, and there's a new mechanic that's strangely added. Like, it kind of existed, but you wouldn't know about it, which is the idea of a counter hit. So normally to get a binding, you're going to need a six charge, unless he's about to attack you. For some reason, getting a counter hit lets you do a five charge uh, as a binding. Um, once again, you want anywhere from three to um, five bindings before you can do a spirit bomb. Um, this is one of these unique attacks. It just yaha, which also send your energy, type E in chats, because we're getting our first spirit bomb. But the aha is a range attack. It normally goes directly at you. Uh, that's not good, but luckily Demonic is able to dodge it with uh, your energy chat. Yeah, that was actually a really, really clutch fight. I'm not it's gonna not over yet. <laughs> we still have a few hits to go off here. Yeah, yeah, there's still, there's, oh, or, sorry, really, really clutch cycle, oh, yeah. I mean. Um, also, uh, we haven't really seen this much. Actually, I'm surprised he actually moved immediately. Normally after a spirit bomb, um, the enemy will be slightly stunned for a moment, but uh, Ralph went immediately into it. Um, Ralph's definitely the most aggressive enemy in the game. I would argue his fight is one of the, if not the hardest. It's either him or Corroder that I would consider to be the hardest ones. Uh, it's funny because like, if you play this game casually, you're going to think, what about the final boss? That one's going to be really easy, and I cannot wait to uh, have us explain that for you. Yeah. Anyway, he's dead. That was, that was one of the best uh, Scissor Man fights I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. That was a good fight. Um, that was actually really sick. <laughs> that definitely made oh, up for all the mistakes earlier. So up to the finale, up to the, uh, it's been an hour and 20 minutes or so, we're getting to the Clock Tower 5, I mean, it's called the Clock Tower 3, but we didn't see a Clock Tower, could you really call it a Clock Tower? Yeah, that would be uh, a big mistake. Right, just, just ignore Clock Tower, Ghost Head. What, what's that again? Are, are you, like, talking about, like, a fan game that's, or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Clock Tower is completely optional in Clock Tower 2. <laughs> But that was uh, another good thing about that Scissor Man fight is it just is faster if you do that counterattack thing because you only need five charges instead of six. Um, it's important to note that um, Burroughs, for whatever reason, only needs five charges 
to bind him. So that's going to be uh, very, very important uh, later on. Also, we got a couple of gears here that we got to crawl under as we're ascending up the clock tower. Uh, this area is, is kind of boring, but I swear, go watch the cutscenes because it makes this clock tower look very, very cool in those. <laughs> Also, we do get a couple more arrows, so our arrows have been picked up in very specific order, like to make sure that we have them in the way that we want to do it. And this boss has kind of been the biggest change in the past, I would say, couple of years. The route hasn't been like too different for a long while now, but we used to do this fight completely differently with a completely different order of arrows that we eventually cut out. Uh, it makes the fight a little bit harder and lasts a little bit longer, but it saves time overall because of that. So we're going to do a little bit more extendo arms right here. This one's not as egregious as the other ones, but still a pretty nice little one. You know, the very original speedrun strat for this fight was to just keep chaining him with three charges over and over again. It just keeps stun locking him with three charges over and over oh, again. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm so that's, glad. Well, at least that's, 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 how it, that's how it was when I first like tackled this run, like after seeing like the segmented run by Lucy on ORX a really long time ago. I was going to say, I'm so glad there's an actual strap for this fight now, because I remember I would um, yeah. <laughs> I would actually go around different Twitch streams, and if you do not know about Clock Tower 3's final boss, uh, this game has an immense difficulty ramp. Like, a, lo no, a lot of people cannot beat this game casually, because the final boss is just so ridiculously strong and difficult. Like, um, they double his life bar, he has so many attacks, they're all powerful, he has different phases. It's like, hey, all right, the last boss is the first boss of the game, and this one is everything. Um, so if you don't mind, I can uh, give a quick explanation on what's going to happen because yep. uh, Mog has to be moving here. Uh, first things first, uh, here's the double life bar. Uh, you normally just have like the, uh, what, the red one? Uh, it's going to be red and green, so you have to take out two. <laughs> um, now, phase one's going to be the hardest phase. Uh, Demonic's going to want to get, I want to say, five bindings. Uh, he's going to be counting in his head to five for each one, and he's going to be baiting a blah -ha. Uh, it's an orb, it is a an attack. Uh, you've been hearing him blah a lot, but luckily dodging and then immediately getting that five charge ready is going to allow him to get a binding. Uh, right now we are on the third binding, I believe. Uh, that's good. Uh, Demonic is keeping this count's head. We're going to be getting these uh, back to back. But we're going to be getting spirit bombs here. Yes, bombs, more than one. Um, we're about to get into action. Let's see. I believe we should be about ready after one more. Let's see. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so the first one was the most important one, which I wanted to kind of just give a moment to um, internal counting and all that. Also, give your energy. First bomb. Type E. So, I said first bomb. So, his health bar is massive, and each spirit bomb will probably do about a third of his health. Uh, we need three to kill him. Now, we've been collecting all these arrows throughout the game. Uh, we're going to use them very much um, in this fight. First things first, uh, Demonic's going to do the strat once again, blah -ha, get a binding. Uh, once we get the first binding, however, what Demonic's not going to do is uh, he's going to run um, behind, um, well, his name is Dick Burrows, but he's going to run behind him and just start chaining arrows into him. Uh, the red arrow is going to be getting a binding on the other side, the green will kind of keep him in this permanent stasis, and then get one more free binding, and now we're on the second bomb, we're charging it again, back to E. And we're going to be repeat, we're going to repeat one more time. Time does not end on the final hit, believe it or not, because there is gameplay after that. But let's see. There's two. Um, and then we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be doing a five charge. Either we get the pool of blood attack, which is risky, or we get the blah ha. Huh? Let's see. All right, we get the pool of blood. Uh, the problem with that is if you're in the wrong spot, it can chain you, which is really bad. All right, there's the last binding. Let's start pumping these arrows into him. And... Oh, good timing. Uh, that actually cleanses every binding on him if he gets that off. So, uh, good thing got that off. All right, oh, last angle. one. <laughs> last one. Channel your energy once more. E3. It's like, yeah, threes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will say, in this next game for the part after the boss fight, I have lost a world record pace run to this. So, it's not done just yet. Yeah. All right, we got to right. hopefully get a ranged attack here. Time is going to be coming up soon. 
<laughs> we are good. Through here and time. GG. Yeah. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. Um, if you want to find uh, more of my content, I do this game. I do a lot of other games. I just recently ran Control in the uh, the mainline SGDQ event. Um, just want to give a special uh, shout out to Exysis and Carcinogen. Both of you are great. Thank you guys so much for helping with commentary. Always uh, a great appreciation to have you guys on. Um, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash demonic robots. And uh, if you would like to shout yourself out, Carsey, um, yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi, I'm Carcinogen. I'm just a guy. You can find me at youtube.com slash CarcinogenSDA. And yeah, we get a, a very lovely cutscene. That's really it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get to defeat our evil grandfather. We get to hug our mom. And, and everything good happens in, in happy little ending. EG. Also, you broke the clock tower. I can't believe it. Dude. That's why there hasn't been a clock tower in game since 2003. You broke it. I know. I'm so sorry. Uh, I guess you could say, you know, after this clock tower breaks, you know, there's a lot of ghosts around Lost Spirits. I guess you could say it's kind of a haunting ground, huh? Ha 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 ha. But yeah, that is Clock Tower 3. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll pass it back over to Egg to do his. Uh, I think you're doing another game after me, aren't you, uh, Ectisis? We, we might have we might have something coming up, but we'll we'll see what's going on with that. We'll talk more about that uh, in a moment here. Uh, but first things first, uh, while we are watching the ending here, I do want to say thank you once again, Demonic, uh, for doing the run, and Carsey for join, joining for commentary. Uh, it is much appreciated. Yep. Oh, thank you for having me. Also, it's I know everyone's supposed to, to see the. Everyone wants to see the knockoff of Ron Weasley, and he does show up. Uh, Dennis, he does show up in this cutscene, I think, in the he does, Cloverfield. Yes. So we get one more uh, budget Ron Weasley uh, before we go to our wellness break. So this is this is all for you, uh, Dennis enjoyers, I suppose. Dennis, 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 Dennis. there he is. Dennis. There's the man. Let's go. All right, so while you're enjoying that, I just want to say that if you're watching this over on YouTube, come on over to twitch.tv slash games done quick. If you're interested in looking at any of our live content, starting uh, most weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff over here, so we'd love to have you. Uh, as well, uh, we're going to our last run of the night. We do have one more, and we're going to a quick wellness break while we set that up. I do hope that you will enjoy that. For right now, stand up, touch your toes, don't die blood clots. We'll be returning shortly. All right, everyone, we're back from the break. Welcome back. Uh, our finale of the night, the final run, is going to be Dead Rising 2 featuring me, actually. Uh, I was actually on backup for Dead Rising 2 at this past Summer Games Done Quick. Uh, I did Dead Rising 1 at the previous event, so I thought it'd be a fun idea to submit the sequel. Normally, you know, once you get one game in, you do the sequel. That's to make sense, right? So, if you don't know how Dead Rising speedrunning works, uh, it's pretty neat, and I'll have a lot to kind of go over and explain. Uh, before I begin, though, uh, if you somehow don't know me and you're watching the show, I am McDysis, I run Speedruns in the Crypt, and I will be running Dead Rising 2. In addition to that, I run pretty much every horror game ever made. It's always kind of interesting to give my actual speedrun caliber instead of the just general hosting I do. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're going to be getting into the game in a moment. I bet you're wondering, how do we speed on Dead Rising? Also, time will begin once we begin the motor cross race. It begins with a pretty fun, uh, I think, mini game, and I'll kind of talk about what that means in a moment, but uh, let's uh, get into that. But Dead Rising games normally aren't speedrunnable. Uh, I've made a video on my YouTube about this, but the general idea is that we have to use mods to speedrun these games because they don't normally have speedrun functions. They normally want you to wait like six hours, so this way you're going to be able to run the games and it's just going to move the in-between time. Anyway, th two, three, two, one, and go. Time begins. So we begin with a motocross race. Um, this is kind of a weird mini game that existed back in the Xbox Live era of Dead Rising. Because uh, every game wanted to have online, so they made this thing called Terror's Reality. And they kind of opened the game with a mini game of a one minute motocross kill as many zombies as you can. Now, do we need to win this? Yes, actually. Uh, there is, believe it or not, tech here. Uh, pop the ones with the orange heads. Uh, it's RNG on how good Leon does. Uh, Chris is always the worst, Animal always be third, and then Leon will be about your level, ideally. Uh, they try to make him not too hard to beat, but. 
you know, sometimes it can get more close if you get bad RNG. Uh, now, the reason why you want to win isn't actually for anything super important. It's because it gives you a very, very minor fraction of XP. So the category we're doing here is Time Skip New Game, meaning we're starting from a fresh level 1 file. I will not be starting from a level 50 file. I'm going to be very weak throughout the game. Uh, and that's kind of one of the fun part about Dead Rising Speedrunning. Hey, look, we won! First place! I can't believe we did it. Alright, so now we're going to go to a locker room where we collect our... I think they give you, like, money, which money in this game really isn't useful. I think it's not a lot either. Um, it's like $10,000 total, which is... Yeah, there it is. Okay, $10,000 from that. Uh, money's not really useful in this game because you don't really buy anything. Like, you can buy little things throughout the game, but we're never going to be doing it in this game. Uh, also, you can see we're Chuck. We're just Somebody, running around. Anybody. We got our yellow jacket. He's a cool dude. And uh, we're about to get a fun bit of tech. Uh, in Dead Rising 1, we don't get to do this because we have to get a weapon. In Dead Rising 2, though, however, it's going to be faster just to eat a death immediately. So this part of the game is just to, like, save your daughter, be world's greatest dad. But I'm just going to get grabbed by one of these zombies. There we go. So by getting grabbed, now I'm going to wait. I'm just going to lose all my health. Uh, the intros of Dead Rising 1 and 2 are going to allow you to take uh, damage. You know, they don't need to be totally shafted by doing this. So what's going to happen is you're going to get a cutscene where it's like, Dad, get up! But dying here is straight up going to be faster than running the entirety of the way through. It's like 13 seconds faster. Uh, it's weird. Um, it would be faster in Dead Rising 1 2 to eat a death, but the problem is there we need to get a weapon, so you don't get to see it. And I think it's just kind of funny tech, just a world's greatest dad. <laughs> and then we're carried back to the safe house. Uh, anyway, uh, continuing onward, um, part of this game is going to be a variety of cases to kind of prove Chuck's innocence because he's going to get framed for being a bad dude. And as well, we need to be a great dad. Uh, we're going to be getting Katie Herzombrex. Do you know what would happen if we didn't get Katie Herzombrex every day? You don't want to know what would happen. I would never let that happen. So anyway, what's going to happen right now is we're going to be kind of doing the tutorial of Zombrex. Uh, the game wants you to go to the pharmacy. I didn't actually know yet you can skip this entirely if you wanted to. Uh, we're doing it anyway because it's really quick and easy. Um, but if you know anything about Dead Rising speedrunning, you're going to be knowing that skateboarding is very important. Uh, it's going to be crucial for our early game movements. Also, I'll remove the phone because every now and again he'll mention they don't like the ringing again and again and again. So, um, skateboarding in this game is slightly different than Dead Rising 1. In Dead Rising 1, skateboard health has three hits, but we can add up a lot more. In this game, they actually have four, but the problem is we're not going to be getting as many books throughout the run. So we're going to go inside the store, I'm going to be grabbing a gun behind the counter, and I'll be grabbing three boards. Now, this run's really difficult because there's going to be a lot of RNG that can kind of impact the way my inventory works. I'll talk about that more in a moment, but just understand that my board count can get rough. And why is that a problem? Because this game has floatier boarding. I call it floaty because, like, it's harder to turn on a dime, it's not as sharp. Uh, but there's a strat you can do where if you let go of the acceleration on the board, you can actually weave through zombies a little bit easier. Uh, if you try doing these weaves while holding down the um, acceleration button, it's not going to work for you. Anyway, uh, here's the looters. I'm going to be shooting them in the neck about uh, three times, ideally. Uh, maybe more. Hey, can you die? There we go. There we go. I'm trying to shoot them in the neck between the neck and the head because that's going to allow me to not knock them down. Knocking them down will take more time. Uh, I'm going to talk to Denise here. Um, I don't actually need the survivor. I'm just going to be leeching experience off of her. Uh, you can tell I'm trying to build up as much experience as possible because... Um, I want to be hitting level 2 at a very particular time. Uh, this game doesn't have generous experience gains like uh, in Dead Rising 1, where if you talk to a survivor, you get like three levels. Uh, in this game, it's much more mean. So you can see doing everything, winning the intro competition, uh, talking to Denise. Um, I barely got anything. Uh, in Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, which is a version of this game where you play as Frank, uh, they did a lot of tuning, and they actually buffed the experience gains. It's very low. Uh, I've so far had perfect boarding, by the way. I know that's not going to sound like much, but with how the zombies can spawn and just wa the way you can move, it can, you can break these boards very quickly. And I'm going to want to keep two at least with me. I don't need all three exactly, but I definitely want to. And now that we have our Zombrex, we can give him back to Katie. So we can go back to being the world's best dad. Also, uh, for my uh, GDQ tech, Richard, I have a question. Uh, do you want to have Richard, uh, not Richard, do you want to have Chuck in his base outfit, or do you want a sillier costume? I 
I don't have any way to read an answer and I think about it. <laughs> I'll assume he might pick. I can also read chat, though. I'll ask a question to chat. What do you prefer a si Oh, wait. Uh, do we prefer a silly costume or the regular costume? Because there's going to be a moment we get one costume change. I won't tell you what it is. I'll just tell you it is possibly silly. Okay, I feel like everyone wanted silly. So right now, we're kind of continuing on with the cases. Uh, you can see Denise is still running. She's been running here like the whole time because survivor uh, health in Dead Rising 2 in the base game is very high. I may also notice I'm not skateboarding through these zombies. My board would immediately break. Uh, you actually want to just run through them because it's really, uh, it's really bad to board through that. There we go. Uh, Denise can actually open the door for you if she is fast enough, but she wasn't, unfortunately, so that's not good for me. I've currently taken one hit. So what I actually want to do in addition to boarding is I want to be counting the amount of hits per board because um, the moment I hit one more zombie, you'll see it starts turning red, and then one more hit after that will break it. Uh, I'll be breaking this board right now, in fact. There we go. See? It's all there. Uh, boards in this game are very fragile. Um, very often, uh, runners will actually want to refresh a board after that chapter if the intro boarding was really unlucky. And there is a factor of luck with this. Even if you're trying to just be as careful as you can, uh, zombies might just get in your way. Uh, believe it or not, turboing exists in this game. Uh, turboing is a phrase that comes from the game Resident Evil 3 uh, that speedrunners kind of co-opted, which certain zombies will um, just kind of bolt after you and reach for a grab. Um, it exists in a lot of Capcom games, and this is no exception. So sometimes a zombie will, instead of just kind of existing, he will rush you. All right, so we're going to meet Rebecca Chang, Action News. Uh, this is going to be an escort mission, and this is going to be kind of just uh, chill moments. Uh, we're going to be escorting her, but before I do that, I'm going to talk to her, and I'm be grabbing this magazine. I've now increased my board health uh, times three. Also, I have the ability to jump. So what that's going to do is instead of being on four health, I am now on 12 health. Uh, meaning I can take a lot more hits, which is why I wanted two boards here. I don't really need the gun, so I can actually just kind of shoot some zombies. I'm shooting these zombies because I don't want them to get in the way of Rebecca later. Because I'm going to need her to be as unimpeded as possible. I'm going to skip the dialogue, and we're going to continue now. So the reason why I was asking for a silly costume is because Rebecca's just going to be going on her own pace. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, she's pretty good at avoiding the zombies, but she'll always be running at the same pace. Uh, there's not really a way to speed her up on the base version of Dead Rising 2, but you can watch him. Uh, oh, I didn't get it. There's a cool trick called the Moon Jump, where you can jump really high. Anyway, everyone wanted a silly costume, uh, so luckily for us, we can just wait right here. And I always love this, because you can make Chuck just be in his underwear. See? Look at look at this chiseled man! The world's best dad and his uh, heart boxers just running around. Anyway, we're going to be on underwear Chuck for the rest of the run, because outfits don't have any real bearing in this category. Uh, you don't need to worry too much. There are some bonus costumes, funny enough, but they only matter for Dead Rising 2 off the record. Um, you can't use them in the base speedrun because they are DLC, and we don't you really use DLC for new game speedruns. It would kind of be like, oh, here's really good buffs. We're not using them. So you can look at him kind of spin around like... I remember when I, played, when I was a kid, I played like Smash Brothers, and there's the trophies that spin around. Stay I always just kind of think Keep Chuck close. looks like that Keep on the board because the way he Keep spins. Keep going. So I hope there? you appreciate him. Still there? It is like Catherine, Let's isn't go. it? Follow me. Faster. Still there? Stick also, uh, believe it or not, uh, Chuck's Stick like 29 in this game, or like Keep 27, moving. I think. I think he's 29. To me. Keep so Stick I was close. always surprised by that because Chuck Stick doesn't look 29. Stick he's close. like, Stick I don't know if he's exactly Stick 29, but he's Keep very on. young for how old he looks. So uh, you can live with that fact, I guess. Uh, okay, so we're gonna now, we're still waiting on Rebecca, but we're gonna have a little bit more proximity here. Uh, I don't wanna hit the zombies, but also I do wanna make sure that Rebecca will follow me. Uh, I can actually be kinda safe by just running to the end here, and if you do somehow take too many zombie grabs, uh, there is a fun strat where you can just kinda buy some chippies for like a hundred bucks in this. See? I buy a little snack. Now, you don't want to pass that line, because Rebecca can have AI issues if you run past this too early. Uh, she'll just kind of keep disrespecting you. And you can actually get this pretty early. Ah, I didn't get crap. it there, but you can get it surprisingly early. All right, now we can head back. Before we head back, though, uh, we're actually going to be going to do some... I guess shopping would be a good way for it. Um, as you may know, we have the tutorial where we got Katie her Zombrex, because after all, Katie does need her Zombrex every day. 
So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna be getting the first of, I wanna say like three Zombrex. It's kind of weird that I don't remember the count, but I remember they all are, which is always a fun time. So we're gonna be going to the top of the barbecue area because uh, the barbecue is going to be having a Zombrex after some platforming. Believe it or not, Dead Rising is a platformer. And the part that sucks is you have to jump surprisingly early. Uh, this is more difficult than it seems because of the way the game runs. Um, I have missed the jump a few times, and the walk of shame back to the barbecue is very sad. If I miss it, I might cry. All right, we made it. Good job. So there's our first, uh, our second Zombrex, I should say. Uh, we can have that. We can chill for now. And now we're back to the safe house. Uh, my boarding's been really good so far, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, another fun thing about boarding is it's not, it's getting an early game thing. I think I talked about this earlier, but with early game boarding, I'm actually going to be using a special strategy later to remove boarding entirely because, you know, while boarding's nice and fast, there's a faster option that we can't get yet, but also it's going to be more reliable through getting through hordes of zombies, and it might have some other uses where I can't quite skateboard. I'm not going to tell you yet just because I think surprises are fun, but if you want to take a wild guess, you may. Also, I don't want to mention, during these shows, I always read the chat. So, hello, chat. I hope you're enjoying the fun. A snack for $100 sounds cheap. I mean, this game was made in 2010. <laughs> so, I mean, it's accurate, isn't it? It's Vegas. All right, so we're back to the safe house, and now you're going to start seeing time skip in action. After 1-4, um, the mod that I'm using here is skipping all the way to case 2-2, and we're going to be able to go on the next missions. So I want to reiterate, the mod isn't actually removing anything too bad. All it's doing is it's removing the waiting time that I would normally be doing nothing during and just putting me to the next mission. So it's just all the actual story missions, which is pretty nice. All right, so Ticket to Ride is going to be um, the case where I really get the rest of my Zombrex and some other uh, materials. Um, I can actually get extra boards if I was having trouble here, but honestly, the boarding's been really good so far. Also, Denise is somehow still alive, so I hope, she, I hope she'll be okay. Hopefully, Denise will be all right. Uh, one can hope. Uh, but what we're going to be getting is the rest of the game Zombrex, and we're going to be getting our gun. So with Dead Rising games, a lot of people never really think about it, but guns are really powerful. Um, you kind of normally think, oh, silly game, silly weapons, must be better, right? Uh, kind of, uh, when you're higher level, but you're lower level, you need the raw firepower that the different guns have. Uh, we had the pistol earlier, and we're gonna be going to our next weapon. Uh, fun fact about Dead Rising 2 base, uh, it's actually harder to do a lot of the combat because they made the guns less strong. Uh, I'm gonna be getting a fun jump here. I whiffed it, that's fun, I get the bonk of shame. And I'm actually going to show you a fun minor strat, just a very minor optimization that I learned at SGDQ. Uh, I was watching a, another runner do this in the practice room, uh, Nolly Q, but you can jump right here and you can actually make the jump from here. And that's faster than doing the big climb around. So shout outs to her for teaching me that jump. So it's kind of funny, I was just walking around, I was like, wait, that's Dead Rising 2. And then I learned how to do a jump at the event that I didn't even know existed. So there's that. <laughs> Uh, we got one of our Zombrex. Uh, I'll be getting another one in a moment here. Um, but the reason why I'm able to get all these is because right now I'm making my way over to the Palisades Mall. Uh, in order to get there, I have to go to the Slot Ranch Casino and the Yucatan Casino. Uh, an important part about Dead Rising speedrunning is not only the movement, but it's also going to be just memorizing the lay of the land. So knowing what casinos are going to be working, knowing uh, where you're going to be doing what. Also, we have a boss fight that I am going to 100% uh, ignore. We're not doing this fight. Uh, this is Ted and Snowflake, uh, the tiger and the handler. We're ignoring them. You get a cool song by uh, uh, Cell Dweller, but all I care about is uh, if I go up here, there's going to be two things. Uh, there is going to be a gun and more Zombrex. Uh, I'm actually going to be just taking... Um, I actually don't have an extra board here, so... I'm be taking the gun, and we can make our way over to one of the hardest missions in the game. Now, uh, before I left for SGDQ, I was doing a practice run, and I accidentally died, and it was actually quite heartbreaking for me. So I'm going to be making a lot of safety saves, because the next couple of chapters get really rough. And we're finally building to the point of the run where I can kind of talk about why this game's so RNG-dependent. So Dead Rising 2 does not have static level-ups. What does that mean? Every time you level up, you're getting a random upgrade so like there's like seven stocks or something and like oh you get like this many movement speed buffs and like this much health upgrades you're getting it randomized every time so you can get a really good upgrade or a really bad upgrade and it's so much fun to think about that 
Um, I will be playing the save, so I'll be saving on my first save file. We'll be on Ticket to Ride. Um, we're about to get into a risky section. Uh, so I'll be getting my gun out. And we're going to be getting into a fight with three mercenaries. Uh, the way it's going to go is uh, I like to kind of pump my bullets. Uh, if I fire all my bullets too early, I'll be running out. You can't uh, run out too fast. You got, you know, you got to, you got to temper it. You, you can't just go all at once. Anyway, the fight's dead, and now you can listen to an awesome soundtrack by a motorcycle. All I like to do is I kind of like to bump it at first, and then I'm going to go left. Uh, the reason I want to bump it is because if I don't bump it, those guys are going to throw that propane tank at me, and that's going to make it so I get knocked way back. By taking an early knockback, I'm going to be doing a manipulation. By riding on the left here, I'm going to be able to land on the uh, cart uh, if I jump this just right and got it also uh how horrifying is this that a man in his underwear is riding on a motorcycle just making this jump and then also not only doing that also gunning down every mercenary uh once again i'll be uh pumping the bullets i want to be aiming for the head uh these guys that we don't have to worry about pumping on the neck i can just go for straight headshots um they can die anywhere from three bullets to more uh that's why i'm kind of analyzing after every shot what i'm doing here uh there is a riskier strat i can go for where i can actually skateboard through this whole thing um but i'm not going to do that because that's not safe uh there's one more guy behind that box by the way but actually yeah there is I don't want to actually fight him, because if I kill him, he'll level me up. I want to level up at a very particular time, because if I level up later, what's going to happen is I will get a free health upgrade, and that's why I wanted to talk to Denise, I had to win the biking minigame, it was all for the matter, so I can do that. That is the sole reason I had to do that. Also, we never follow the arrow. The arrow up above you is full of lies. You know what you should follow? Follow twitch.tv slash ecdysis. I do streams uh, very, very often. I do a bunch of horror games, and I run this GDQ hotfix. Um, I plan on doing a big Dead Rising marathon on Friday, if you want to see more of that. So, Also, yes, Denise is now gone. F, Denise. All right, so this board's about to break, but that's going to be quite okay. Uh, we're actually hitting the point soon where my boards aren't going to be as important. So fun fact, you might be asking, can you save scum the level ups? The opposite. <laughs> um, that's actually one of the funniest things to me, because with the level up system, if you try like leveling up into a save, if you have that save and load it, you lose the level up. So you don't want to save on a level up. You never want to do that. It's really bad. Also, there's another boss fight that I'll be ignoring. Uh, that is Brandon. He's like an evil protester. Uh, he's like. I don't really know his exact gimmick, but he's like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, but instead of food, it's murder. Alright, good stuff. So we did it. And yes, Denise died for a good cause. I think that was a pretty smooth one. I, I've been known to be a smooth dude. I, I shaved a mustache recently. For those of you who remember the speedrunners in the crypt before GDQ, I had a very long mustache. And there's a new era of me, so I'm now a smooth dude. <laughs> and that is the way I've been calling it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to be getting Katie her Zombrex once again, and I'm actually going to be getting an autosave. Uh, this autosave is going to be my best friend, and it's going to be a very important one. Uh, I think out of any case in this game, uh, the one that would make you dread running it is going to be Boomtown. Uh, the reason why is it's buggy, there's so many enemies, they do a lot of damage. You're level 1! I, I haven't even hit level 2 yet. So... Uh, I will be taking an autosave here. Um, I don't want to accidentally die. Uh, I'll kind of talk about the pitfalls of every section. Also, I don't think this has an autosave now I think about it. So how about we go for a manual one? Luckily as well, for such a risky run, uh, this is the final run of the night, and I made my estimate higher than I made my safe estimate, because I know how rough this game can get. <laughs> Uh, for any type of marathon showcase, Dead Rising 2, I think, is the hardest Dead Rising game to do at a marathon. Um, Dead Rising 3 has its issues, but normally it's kind of um, consistent. Uh, Dead Rising 1, I think, is one of the easiest to do because it's very just arcadey. It's very just... I, I love it. I love Dead Rising 1 a lot. And Dead Rising 4 has a lot of checkpoints. Um, Dead Rising 2 actually gave you continues, so if you die, it's much more forgiving. Um, I, I recommend the game a lot. I don't want to just hype up that game and not hype up this game, but I think if you're looking for an easier experience in Dead Rising 2, Dead Rising 2 off the record is a better one. Now, both of them are really good. Uh, I definitely like Dead Rising 2, and that's why I submitted to Dead Ri um, to GDQ, because it has some unique tech that I think is just really awesome. So. 
All right, so now we're in Boomtown, um, our run for the money. Run for the money is going to be a case where the soldiers are here, uh, TK's goons, um, and I'm gonna be kind of um, not only avoiding the zombies, but I wanna make sure these guys don't shoot me too much. And that's why I waited for that, because you saw I was on one health, and these guys, I got range attack increase, that's actually really good. Um, not the best upgrade I can have, but a very good upgrade. And I will explain why, are you dead? You're not dead yet, hey, die. There we go. And it's a very good upgrade. Um, there we go. Uh, let's also see if I can use this here. There is some slight RNG, by the way, where if you shoot this, sometimes it doesn't work. So, range attack upgrade is one of the two good upgrades. We got one of the two good ones. Um, the reason why is because stock is going to be the best always. Also, let's take another coffee. There we go. Uh, off the record, there's a lot of significant changes. It's a much easier run, but it, it's definitely a fun run. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, it's a neat run if you've never seen it. I have it on my YouTube. <laughs> so we got one down, we're breaking all these machines. Also, for those of you asking, answer the phone. I was currently in the middle of combat. So, might be a bit tough there. Also, I don't think you can do it on, on the skateboard, so you have to wait. There, you can have the cancel. Alright, I'm gonna refresh the skateboard just in case, because while the boarding's been good, normally, like, this is the part where you wanna refresh it. Uh, we're going to all of the different casinos. Uh, so the next one will be going over to Slot Ranch, kind of why I mentioned you're going to all the major areas of the game, um, which, it's just all of them. Um, we went to the Americana, next to Slot Ranch, uh, after that will be the uh, Yucatan, and then we also go to the Atlantica to finish it up. All right, so. Here we go. Oh, I was good, good neck cracks. I, I enjoy them quite a lot. All right, so. What's gonna happen right now is we're gonna be having more of the goons. Um, they always have the same spawn points. Uh, you may notice I'm getting off my board before I start shooting. Uh, dismounting's a pain. Uh, the reason why is because this game uh, sometimes bugs out. And what I mean by that is if you try, if you're on a board and they shoot you, Chuck will automatically go back onto the board. It's as bad as it sounds. It is very rough. Also, I am low on bullets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this guy and then we're going to just start shooting this. Uh, luckily, they have a lot of guns. I'll be borrowing one of their guns as well. Cool. And I'm also going to take this guy's gun. I guess I'm saying I'm, I, I'm saying borrowing, but I'm not going to return it. Also, it's Vegas. So we're going to drink a whole handle of whiskey. I can't believe it. Look at that man. I mean, I can relate a little bit. Not, not so much to the Vegas. More the fact that I bought a skateboard recently. It's a nice skateboard. But there we go. Also, yes, net crack ASMR is pretty good. And thank you for the kind words in the Dead Rising runs. Okay, so what's gonna happen right now is we are going to be going to the Yucatan. Uh, the Yucatan is the last normal casino, but it's gonna be very important because of how large it is. Um, I, I am gonna make sure that my boards stay alive until the next boss fight. Once it gets to the next boss fight, we're gonna be changing the strat a little bit here. Uh, I mentioned we're going to be having a very you know, interesting bit of change going on, and it's gonna be fun. Uh, there's a couple of safety routes. If you go through the shop, a uh, guy will be shooting you, so normally you wanna go outside, but I wanna get out behind these machines. You may notice I'm always trying to make sure I'm not getting shot when I'm getting out. I need to make sure I kill at least one of these guys with my 30 bullets. Um, sometimes you can actually just not get the kill, like, cause they have a weird bit of invulnerability. I don't know why. Uh, sometimes they just like, no. Also, my favorite part's the guy who lobs a grenade two feet away from himself. Uh, I used the propane tank, that can get some free damage on one of the guys, that was good. Um, I luckily I don't have the weird grenade guy. Uh, so far, run for the money's been good. Oh, hold on, uh, good gun, thank you. Also, the answer is always steal their gun. Um, unfortunately, these guns only have 30 bullets. Uh, this way, ranged attack was actually pretty good. It was one of the good upgrades, and we are going to be now cleansing this out with the assault rifles. Wait, oh, I got the bug. I love the bug. Uh, by that, I mean I hate it. Uh, maybe it won't totally happen. No, not the keyboard. There we go. There, okay, it's working. There's a random bug if you try shooting, it doesn't work. Also, after following the whiskey, it's Vegas, so we're gonna drink a beer. Hey, it was like me last... <laughs> Nothing, I mean. Also, to play it safe, I'm gonna take a cake. That's not the only cake we're taking, but we have a uh, cake that's going to be pretty safe for later. 
So the reason why I'm gonna want that is because we're gonna be hitting the boss of this. I count I count it as a boss. Because while I broke all of this, we're not gonna be fighting a van. Um, the van fight is going to be us just kind of drilling, uh, you know, a van with the gun. Um, I picked up the LMG in there, so you can see I have 200 bullets again. This gun is going to be immensely important. It is a very strong gun. So, what's going to happen here is I'm going to go left to go right. What I mean by that, there's less zombies on the left for some reason, and then once you kind of get to the middle of it, um, they kind of disperse. And I actually want to go on the right. Uh, I want to be on the right side because there's going to be too many enemies on the left, and if I try approaching them, it is such a pain. Um, you don't want to be doing that just because, uh, like I mentioned, if you're on a skateboard and you're getting drilled by bullets, you're never going to get undrilled by those bullets. So, instead of dealing with those guys over there, I'm going to go to the right while they're shooting zombies. Uh, if they shoot me, they'll miss, and we can actually take the long way, long way around. And a fun little glitch, I think, with the AI is by going into this planter, um, the forward guys won't notice me. Um, actually, most of these guys don't even really notice me, except for, like, one or two of them. So I'm gonna kill these. Actually, that guy's not even trying. The zombies notice you. Uh, but this guy won't... Oh my god, please. The only guys that notice you are right there. So now I'm gonna wait right here, and I'm gonna be pumping bolts in the van. Um, you can kill these guys if you want experience. I don't really need to. Like I said, this is a neat glitch I actually found uh, before GDQ where you can... Oh, God, they're going. Go, go, go. Chuck, go, go. All right, we did it. <laughs> Eat the cake, Chuck. Eat the whole cake. Oh, God, I'm getting beat. Oh, yeah, we did it. It's done. Run for the money is done. That's one of the hardest missions in the game. We did it. I'm making a save because I am not going to get cocky. But trust me, I've, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> um, but it's a neat glitch. Uh, they just don't attack you. Uh, also, like I said, we're gonna eat the entire cake. And uh, funny enough, I actually want to get rid of my gun. Um, the reason why is because I want a new one. So I probably could have spent more bullets there. Now, the reason why I wanted to uh, make sure I had low skateboards is because we might be making a route difference right now. In fact, I kind of might make it entirely now I'm thinking about it. Uh, but we'll see. I don't think I need... No, I'm not going. I won't make it entirely... Oh! Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got inventory. Wait. You know what? Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of rerouting for a moment because I think it's going to be better, but, uh... Okay. So this is the juice boost. I am boosting my juices. What that means is throughout Dead Rising, uh, both in 1, 2, and I think 3 might have it, but I don't remember using it in 3, um, there is a mechanic called, um... Mixed drinks. What happens is you can mix certain foods, and that... Also, I didn't need to drop the magazine yet. I don't know why I did, but it's all right. Um, the stock upgrade's really good, because now I have more, obviously. Also, I already mentioned it earlier, I can't answer the phone while on the skateboard. You'll have to wait at least a little bit till I'm off the board. We still have some uh, things we must be doing here. Good timing, by the way, because the board broke. So we're going to be getting the gun once again up here, and while I don't have skateboards anymore, uh, I'm going to be going to the next area. Now, I don't know if this is entirely faster, because normally you'd want to grab the juice boost later, um, but I am now going to be routing out uh, skateboards. I don't need them anymore. Why? Because of our friend Quickstep. If you've never played Dead Rising, uh, Quickstep is amazing. Also, I'm going to take three beers. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bar, and my bar order is this. So, I like to ask the bartender, can you get me a beer, and can you mix it with wine? And then I want to do that, like, four times. This is going to seem slightly slower, and it's going to be weird that it might be like, what, 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 what are you doing? Why are you doing this? So, the drink quick step makes you move at the fastest speed possible. Uh, it is immensely fast. It is kind of wild how fast it is in fact. No, don't do that. Thank you. Uh, give me the wine. No, get, get, look. Sit down there. The wine. Look, look, thank you. And you might have noticed, there's a times two next to the quick step. So, why did I make so many? So, with times two quick step, and all these quick steps, I'm now going to drink, and each of these are going to last me two minutes. I'm going to be running at max movement speed for two minutes. Uh, this is going to be better for not just the zombies, 
Uh, I don't have to worry about skateboarding anymore. If I hit them, it doesn't matter because I can just weave through them. Uh, I have more direct control. Uh, Twitch chat will be thankful because now I can actually pause the phone calls. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a strat where I kind of weave my controller. That's going to let me pass through the crowd of zombies with no issues whatsoever. And are we going to be ready for our fight with the, um, the twins? Uh, we're gonna be going for gold because gold is just faster. Um, the only reason why is because she's on me. Uh, luckily, I got the best upgrade of also ranged attack. I got really good RNG in this run. I'm kind of bummed out that it's uh, in uh, not using the in-game timer. But you can see, once again, for this fight, I'm pumping the bullets. Uh, for any fight in Dead Rising, you never want to go all out. If you go all out, you'll run out of bullets and it's not going to work for you. Um, as well, I need to conserve my bullets. Uh, there is a downside where I need to make sure I'm not hitting Crystal. Uh, you only need to kill one of them for the fight to work. You do not need both Crystal and Amber. You just need, oh, uh, you need Crystal or Amber. Uh, the other one will uh, die once you win. And good. I have 20 bullets left. I wish I had a little bit more, but we'll make this work. Uh, I'm definitely going to be making a save if they allow me. I think they will. Soon. No, not here, not here. Uh, next one. Okay, there. Anyway, you can enjoy the dance music while we just start running back now. I got an attack damage increase. Uh, it's not really going to be useful. Uh, range attack's nice because it affects the guns, while uh, stock's nice because I get more quick steps. Uh, normally, I would have actually kept my skateboard until the quick steps, and I would have just made a bunch of quick steps instead. But the fact that I was able to actually trade that over is really nice because I just got an extra inventory. Uh, I think if you do get stock, it is worth it to trade because you want to make sure the inventory is going to be lasting. Also, this is going to help because I got to get rid of two items, not just one. I got rid of not only my skateboard, but I also got rid of the um, quick step. Also, we can answer the phone. What's the phone say, I wonder? Let's see, I'll answer it next time. Let's see what the phone says. What does it say? Let's see. I can't believe it says follow twitch.tv slash McDices. I can't believe it. Wait, I just said that on the phone. I mean, I know that. that's why it was so urgent, right? I, I can't believe it. I get to do a smooth segue once again. Only because people keep asking, what does the phone say? <laughs> so, uh, the whole reason why I wanted to submit this game to GDQ is about to happen. So, if you know anything about Dead Rising, it's the wacky weapons. It's the silly stuff. It's how, I mean, we're, we're, a, we're a man running in his underwear, uh, trying to make sure his daughter doesn't turn into a zombie. It's, it's a fun game. It's funny. So, continuing with this, we're going to do one of the most, you'll never hear this in another game. There's no other game that you will hear this strat in. So, I have one inventory slot right now, I have my quick steps, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be running to the toy store. Because, you know, our daughter's been so good lately, uh, I'm going to get her a spitball gun. Toy spitball gun, right? I'm going to keep this with me, and we're going to be going uh, back to the um, safe house. Um, this is going to be a nice, easy run back. Also, a lot of the bosses spawn in. I love the bosses in this game, by the way. My favorite fun fact that you'll never hear anywhere else. Uh, the boss fight Slappy is Light Yagami from Death Note. He's the English VA. You'll hear it in the laugh. I tell everyone in this. He's going to be God of the New World, or he'll have a girlfriend. And I love Slappy. Just listen to it if you never heard it. It's great. I'm a, I'm a bit of a weeb when it comes to Death Note. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> so I will say that right now. Uh, as well, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to be having the Zombrex. So we're giving Katie her next dose of Zombrex. Um... She's going to be taking it once again. Uh, and this is why I gathered them all early, so anytime I just come back, it just really quick, Katie gets the Zombrex. Now, another reason why the quick step's so good, you may have noticed something. I can't skateboard indoors because that's rude. However, quick step does not care for being rude or nice. Uh, I'm going to save the game here just in case because I don't remember if it's going to let me on the next one. And this next mission can get quite risky. Um, I think it might. If it doesn't, I'd rather just be safe than sorry. I'm not actually doing really good right now. Also, look at all the mis message expires. I can't believe it. But this is why Quick Step's so fast. Also, I'm actually timing my areas in this game to be making more Quick Steps as I go. Um, certain drinks can make Quick Steps, yeah. so you just have to keep in mind what ingredients those are going to be. So when I run out of Quick Step, I'm actually going to be gathering more Quick Step. Um, I think this is probably going to run out by the time I get to the next area, but we'll see. Also, this is where I actually killed my, uh, my practice run before GDQ. And I'll not be doing that. And yes, I saw the new Death Note live action. I'm hoping it's going to be good. I will watch it. I watched the American Death Note and I was sad, but also I laughed. So I got something out of it, right? All right, so I actually want Quick Step to run out soon. 
I agree. We do need a speedrun in the Crypt shirt. We do. I agree. Okay, so we're back here now, and this mission is going to be dealing with TK's goons, and we're going to be doing a boss fight with a helicopter. That's kind of why I called the van a boss fight, because the helicopter is also a boss fight. Also, I might have perfect, uh... You know what? Let's actually play this safe. I have an idea. Um, I'm going to actually wait a moment. I'm going to drink quick step, and I'm going to take this handgun. Um, I was I was worried earlier because I'm left with 20 bullets. Um, but the next fight, you want to make sure that you have enough for each goon. Uh, it takes about three headshots to kill each one, and I have 20 bullets. While that is enough, it doesn't make up for any leeway or, you know, if I, if I make a mistake. So that wouldn't be very good. Also, you may have noticed, I'm still level four and I have four health. And even basic uh, goons in this game can be really good at, uh, you know, eviscerating you. So I want to be very careful with the way this is going to be going. Uh, luckily for me, though, I still have quick steps, so I've never had quick step in this area of the game, I don't think. Normally I'm boarding again, but I have quick step right now. Also, another boss fight to introduce. This is the Rednecks. Uh, they are a lampoon of the snipers in Dead Rising 1. Um, they're mostly annoying because they can shoot you, but he's not normally going to be doing it. Uh, but we get to see Big Earl for a moment. Why is he big? We'll never know. So... Here's going to be the first part of this two-part section. Uh, part one requires us to kill four of TK's goons. Um, I'm luckily going to be pretty fast going into here. Um, there's one. I'm getting... And I did have enough, so I can actually go to this. And we're going to be walking into the elevator and just pushing the button. I don't have to actually... I don't, oh, uh, sir. There you go. I don't have to actually worry about the guy. I can just go in there. All right, so if you're wondering what's going to happen now, I have no guns. I don't have a gun. I'm going to need a helicopter. Uh, just watch, and I'll explain what happens after that. I'm going to use a toy spitball gun. I'm going to be firing the spitball gun into the helicopter, and it's going to be losing a lot of health. I dodge the hit because that will hit me. I aim up. Uh, I'm missing some of those shots. That's fine. And I'll just keep firing, and we walk away with our toy spitball gun. So I just used a toy spitball gun to destroy a helicopter, and now TK is down, his boss fight's dead. Now, why does that work? It's a toy spitball gun. That works because in this game, they don't want you to be totally uh, shafted if you're going into that fight. Um, so throwable items do a sizable chunk of damage to the helicopter. Now, uh, the spitball gun actually counts as throwables. So that's really good for me. Um, every single toy projectile is like firing a lamp at it. Like there's like little spotlights. You're essentially like throwing 20 quick spotlights and that's why spitballs take out a helicopter. It's a very interesting strat. I don't know why it, uh, it was for Katie, but now we gave her Zombrex. I think she would prefer the Zombrex. It's just a little bit. Uh, and now the military's come in. Uh, there are now super zombies and I hope my frame rate in this game doesn't get totally destroyed because that would not be very good. In fact, I think it'd be quite banned. So, uh, I don't get a save, uh, just in case, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess around, we're doing really good, this is a solid run, we're gonna go underestimate, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna choke it right now, I'm not going to, uh, every time I do this game, I'm like, oh, what if I, mm, wait, wait, hmm, 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 anyway, um, so, I mentioned earlier, one, I don't want this gun anymore, I need to get rid of it. Two, uh, I still have quick step. Now, what do I do in addition to having quick step? More quick step. What does, how do you make more quick step? Well, you need the ingredients. What are the ingredients? Coffee creamer. So, I'm going to be grabbing a bunch of coffee creamers around here. Um, I got a bunch so far, and I'll be getting one more in a moment. I'm actually going to wait uh, one more second for me to uh, lose it. So I don't have to worry about the zombies as much. Okay, so right now I have four coffee creamers. Uh, coffee creamer is the actual key to quick step. Uh, luckily, if you didn't get those ones, uh, there's one in this planter. Um, there's also one in the uh, dice area, the crafts table, the giant one with the, all the dice. Oh, uh, that's fine. And that's going to be good for me there. I don't know if I exactly need four, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And like I said, with Quick Step, this is much better. Uh, as the game progresses in Dead Rising, if you're not familiar with the gameplay loop, um, 
the more you get into it, the more zombies spawn. And you also have uh, gas zombies. Uh, these are ones that uh, will puke on you, they'll stun you, and you just won't be able to do much against that. Uh, it's really rough and you can lose a lot of health. Also, it looks like I gained a uh, bar of health and I don't know what the other upgrade was, but I got two upgrades. Uh, unfortunately, they don't even matter at this point, so it's fine. But what I will be doing is I'm gonna be going over to a pub over here. Uh, this is going to get me a blender. And I should be able to make all my drinks if I do this right. Uh, I think I grabbed one too many, but that'll be okay. So if you combine uh, coffee creamer and orange juice, ew, you get a quick step. I don't recommend actually trying this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't think it works like that. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, no, actually, okay. Oh, uh, no, it's beer. I didn't hurt to check. I thought there'd be one more. Okay, I got one too many. So let's just do this, and that'll be fun. Oh, it doesn't matter. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, also, uh, thanks to Nolly Q again, because I learned apparently... Where is it? I've been lied to. Where is it? You know, I probably should have actually asked her. Uh, I was told there's a shotgun on the stage, and I have no idea where it is. Uh, I was about to say thank you to Nalaki for telling me about the shotgun, but I realized, wait a minute, I never asked where it actually was. Uh, so luckily for us, this guy's a shotgun. I got jump kick, okay. <laughs> so we got the shotgun anyway. We're gonna be using a shotgun for the next boss fight, and that'll be good. Also, like I said once again, a lot of quick stuff going on. Um, I kind of wanted this quick stuff to run out earlier, but it won't be the end of the world for this. Um, but we're gonna be getting into our next boss fight. I think you're a big fan of Dark Souls. Up on the speakers. That would make more sense. <laughs> Either way, luckily I had a pretty good clearing of zombies, so we're all good. Also, I uh, am going to be entering, like I said, one of the hardest bosses in the game. This is going to be a uh, a Souls fight, except we're the, we're the boss and this is the not boss. Uh, the reason why is because we're going to be uh, looping him very close and he's going to keep dodge rolling. Um, the movement speed from Quick Step is going to allow me to kind of just keep weaving in and out with shotgun bullets. Um, this is why you want to use Quick Step here. Uh, I'm making sure to pump. He's going to be keep rolling. Now, uh, the problem is if I do not um, get, stay in this range, what will happen is... Uh, oh, God! Okay, good. That was really lucky. Uh, Boykin will uh, melee me, and I get knocked down. Uh, I'll turn. Oh, hold on. Go, go, go. Thank you. Alternatively, he'll keep shooting at me, which is also bad. Uh, I do want this gun. Luckily, there's a lot of guns in here. Come on. And Boykin is down, and I probably can get another assault rifle. There we go. Good fight. But that's why he just keeps rolling. Any lore where the main guy doesn't uh, get uh, die after getting bitten? He's BD. Also, at this point in the game, they give you so many upgrades. I have, uh, I got, I think I got two stock upgrades, by the way. I think I got stock twice. I got health. I got, I got health. I know they got another stock. Yeah. So I am way overloaded on stock now. Uh, luckily for me, I can just drop Rebecca off here, and we're gonna drive. Come on. We're gonna take our little cart, and we're gonna take Rebecca back to the safe house. Because she is precious cargo, after all. Uh, so it's a really neat boss fight. Um, by using the speed of the quick step, we're able to kind of keep him in range and prevent him from just, you know, uh, tearing us apart with bullets, but also we're able to avoid getting hit. Um, it's very nice for that. Uh, you may also notice, uh, why am I taking the car? Because partway through this run, I will likely be dropping quick step. Um, not, not, the, not the whole thing, but the one I have right now should be dropping a bit. If it doesn't, I'll be kind of laughing, but I'm expecting this to drop a bit because the boy can fight and me heading over there. Like I said, it takes about two minutes. Yeah, see, there's the drop. So what I want to be doing is, by the time it runs out, I want this cart to be right in front of the um, Royal Flush Plaza. Uh, that's the main plaza that we go back to that the safe house is attached to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to park the car right here. Uh, I'm going to then uh, avoid these zombies. Uh, please, excuse me. Thank you. Bring another quick step. Pick up. Oh, uh, pick up. Rebecca, Rebecca, come on. Go, go, go. All right, we did it. So uh, we now have quick step equipped once again. That's the whole reason we do that, just so I can get the next quick step ready. I want full quick step going into Royal Flush Plaza. Uh, the reason why is because I don't have access to a car indoors, so I'll have the carrier. Look, I mean, this car exists, but it's a million dollars. I only have 13,000. I can't afford that. It's not on my salary. It doesn't work. I only have 13,000. That's a million. 
But Quick Step's gonna allow me to run through this whole thing, like I mentioned earlier. And the best part is in the past, we had a mission that it's just kind of running through the safe house, but Quick Step will last long enough. So that's going to let me just run through the uh, most of the mission at a much higher speed. Uh, it's kind of funny because I think when I submitted the game to GDQ, um, the Quick Step tech wasn't nearly as refined. But after GDQ, like after the game got into GDQ, we kind of found, hey, boarding sucks in this game. Just make a bunch of Quick Steps. And it's really good, uh, believe it or not, which you can tell if you've been watching this run, right? Okay, so now we're gonna be getting the break-in. Also, at this point in the run, we're home free. Uh, I think Boykin was the last major case, so I will not be saving my game anymore. If I die, you're allowed to laugh at me. I'll give you one laugh. I will probably save before the final boss, because uh, in terms of boss fights, we only have the final one coming up. But uh, you can now see, uh, we're gonna be running really fast while repairing the safe house. Uh, also, like all these, we're gonna be uh, defending this house against zombies while we're just like zooming. Um, the thing here is you're going to be getting three heavy items. The generator, the spool of wild, and the gas barrel. It doesn't matter on the uh, order, you just want to make sure that you're not bumping the zombies while doing this. Um, quick step is when we get max effectiveness if you're not bumping the zombies. Also, or getting hit. Wait, where's my... Thank you. He hit me. So you want to make sure that you're not going to be weaving into them. It's very good for avoiding zombies, it's not so good for speed. Uh, the generator is right here, so luckily we can get this. And then the last one's gonna be all the way on the other end here. Uh, this is a live run. This is Speedruns in the Crypt. It is a GD Hopic show where we showcase um, the spookiest speedruns around. Uh, today's episode is based on games that were on backup for SGDQ at the previous events. Uh, think of it kind of like a bonus horror block because we love the horror block here. It's one of my favorite blocks. Uh, I had a great time watching it, a lot of good runs. Also, Quick Step lasted the whole time during this section. That's really good. And then we're just gonna mash the button. This is pretty easy. Uh, there's one more part where the run can get risky, but I think I have so much health, I'm not gonna be too worried. Uh, plus, I'm pretty good on my gun, so. We'll be good. Uh, in terms of GDQ, my original estimate was a 105. I did make it 110, because this is the final run of the night, and I wasn't too sure how it would be. But I did definitely want to um, just make sure we're safe for the ending here. So there we go. All right. I probably could have saved it there, but it's aight. I've been doing a lot of saving lately. All righty, so now we are getting to the only lead. Uh, we're going to drink our quick step once again. Uh, you may notice I'm not actually going to be getting more quick step materials. Why? Because we'll be having some on the way back, I think. Uh, this should last me long enough. If it doesn't, I'll eat my words. I think I'll take one coffee creamer just in case uh, for safety. Or I'll take one or two, maybe. Let's take two. I know where I can get them. This will be fast. Um, we're going to take the ones over here. Uh, the reason why I'm going to want two coffee creamers is just because... Actually, I think I can just make one straight up. Uh, let's see. Oh, never mind. No, not the pot. I want... Oh, God. Give me, give me the OJ. Thank you. Okay. There's one on top of there, I think. Oh, God, where is it? There you are. Come here. Okay. If I get grabbed again, that's going to be bad. So let's try avoiding that. Good, good, good. So, I want one more just in case because uh, we are nearing the end of the game a little bit here. Uh, right now, we are heading to the final regular mission before we get to the final boss. Um, the final boss, by the way, will have some interesting tech, and there's a few ways we can go around that. Uh, normally, for the final boss, if you're running low on quick step, you can actually make more right before it, which, that's good for us. But I want to make sure I have the ingredients just in case. There's going to be enough blenders where it's not going to be immensely greedy to do so. Uh, we're actually passing by one of my favorite ones. So what I might do is I might make it on the way back. And we will see. Because uh, this should last me long enough to go through the whole thing. Uh, anyway, I'm going to... Wait, I, oh, right. I had, like, a lot of stock. I keep forgetting I had so much stock. Like, oh, why do I have two guns? Normally, I don't have two guns here. But now I have two guns. So, uh, weird fact. They made this section harder in Dead Rising 2 off the record. Uh, in Dead Rising 2, it's pretty easy because you just walk through and there's a bunch of zombies crowding a door. And like, wait, where are the zombies here? 
And off the record, there's like, oh, there's a bunch. So we're going to be going to the door and I think I want to play this safe and save this because I can make quick step with other OJ. Oh, wait, never mind. Apparently I can activate that while drinking. This is the final game of the night for this showcase. Let's play this safe, he says. Find them on the wall. They haven't noticed me yet. Okay, so two guys up here. I'm going to be popping these two with the assault rifle. Um, I want to make sure that they die uh, just because um, if I try getting up, it can go really bad. Um, all right, got both. The two over there aren't nice to me, but they aren't at, like they aren't as bad. You can deal with them. Uh, wait, my quick, wait, quick step right out. Oh god, I was right. I mean, I did call it at least, right? You know what? They all died. Okay, it is now time for the hardest boss in the game. I forgot they're like get rid of that. No, wait, coffee. Wait, there's coffee. You know, I've never actually had to grab things down here. All right, it's now time for the hardest boss in the game. Uh, I'm gonna be moving a little bit slow. But that's gonna be okay. We'll still be way under, well, I think we'll be decently underestimated. So here's the hardest hardest boss in the game. It is two scientists. And Mark and Pierce. Hooray, I beat the boss, they're dead. I'm not kidding, they're actually coded as bosses in the game's uh, files. Um, and if you wanna do all bosses, you have to kill them. And they actually can kill your run. A lot of people kind of underestimate them. Uh, but they are absolutely able to murder your run. No, you don't get to repair the laugh. We still have the final boss coming up. But that is a real boss, and I have lost a run to them before. I have lost world record pace runs to those guys. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, underestimated the amount of quick steps I needed, so I'm going to have to walk slow for a little bit. Uh, at least until I can get back until the... Uh, what, what's the word? The uh, the pub. Luckily for us, though, uh, we're actually going to be doing our final item gathering of the game, really, after I make these quick steps. As I can make two, and that'll last me throughout the whole rest of the game. Also, remember when Playboy was a thing? Apparently they advertised in Dead Rising 2. Like, that's a weird advertising gimmick, right? Anyway, uh, we're getting two sniper rifles. I need two just in case. One uh, for the fight coming up, and one for emergency. Let's go back down. Actually, I might be able to do something crafty. Nah, nah. The next boss is hard. It just, the scientists can be hard. Um, they are coded as bosses. Oh God, no. Ooh, wait, don't, 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 don't. Hold on. You're, you're dead, right? Okay, you're dead. Okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. We did it. We did it. We're close. Very close. I didn't die to any of the bad stuff, but I was tied to a basic zombie. You know, uh, maybe I only make one quick step. You know, no, no, hold on. It's Vegas. I know what to do. In every trash can. No, that's a gun. No, wait. Do not eat the spoiled. I thought, all right, hold on. Normally you throw a trash can, there's vodka. That'll do. Okay, that'll do. I literally just need enough for one, for one, uh, what's the word? One health bar. Avoid me, please. Thank you. Avoid me. The pub's right there. We get him moving fast once again. I miscounted my quick steps by one, I think because of one of the fights. Thank you. All right, so here we go, back in business. And then, I actually am going to drink this before I do anything. Don't hit me. Thank you, my lad. Okay, now we can finally head back. Okay, we're back on track. Also, luckily for me, I don't need to make quick step for the rest of the game. Those are the last two needed. Uh, normally, you would want to chain them a little bit better, but it's not the end of the world with that. So, 
Uh, I do have these sniper rifles, and if it wasn't apparent, these are going to be the weapons I use for the final boss. Uh, the final boss is quite difficult. Uh, if you play Dead Rising 1 and you're familiar with that game, it's going to be like the Brock fight. So it's supposed to be melee hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, the intended route, but you can kind of do something a bit cheeky. And I actually discovered this off a Let's Player, I think. Or not really a Let's Player, but like some, some random video on YouTube, uh, just, you know, like released like 12 years ago from a channel that was never uploaded. Uh, like, you know, anything else since then. Released like a, oh, here's a cheese to this boss fight. And I found it and I was like, wait, you could do that? And it's going to be a fun cheese when we get to it. Uh, I think you might also laugh as well, because some of the way the uh, dialogue is spoken. Also, I really wish I had my in-game timer for this, because um, I might be on a good pace right now. Last I checked, my timer's about like a 55 or something. Um, I think when I got my previous time, uh, now it's second place, but at the time it was record, uh, I want to say it was like a, roughly an hour flat. So... All right, so big plot twist. Sullivan is the bad guy. Oh no, he is stealing technology like a laptop. Uh, just in case, let's save it. We have plenty of time. We're on the facts. Uh, no need to embarrass myself. Just in case, we'll do the walk of shame again if we have to. Uh, I quite literally have a lot of time save here. Um, we're probably going to be going under my actual 105 estimate. So the 110 may have actually been more than I thought it would be. But I do want to take a moment just to say I hope that you've enjoyed this run. Uh, Dead Rising is a series that does mean a lot to me, and I do love a lot of horror franchises. I think definitely the three that I most identify with are Dead Rising, Clock Tower, and uh, Silent Hill. So, really, if you're into anything in horror, definitely come uh, check me out sometime. I'll probably do some plug later, but this is just kind of more of a heartfelt I love Dead Rising kind of comment. And I plan on doing uh, Dead Rising as a full mar series marathon. It takes me like 12 hours. I do one, two, three, and four. And I fight all the bosses, and it's fun. It's a fun time. So we're going to be going back over to the Yucatan right now. Uh, you can go outside, but you can also kind of just go through the uh, casinos. And the casinos are, I think, a little bit nicer. Um, it's weird that going the longer way, so to speak, is faster. Uh, the whole reason why... I, I run a lot of games, so a lot of franchises, but, like, particular ones are those. Like, I think I have, like, over 125-plus horror games now. Like, if you name a horror game, I've probably ran it at this point. And most games... There's some I haven't ran or some I don't want to run, but, like, I've covered a lot of... a lot of franchises. So, if you like spooky stuff, I'm a spooky guy. Uh, there we go. I could take one more quick step to the road, but I don't think we'll need it. But I should grab some help. Just in case. Let's play it safe just in case for that. There are bosses in Dead Rising 4, they do exist. I ran Speed Home, yes. Uh, it's on all of my speedrun.com profile. I um, tried to put everything up there. Let's actually take uh, up here. I don't think I need quick step right now. I'm doing pretty good. I'll eat my words if I have to. Uh, so we're going to be going over to the elevators. And uh, the reason why I'm going to want that beer, the reason why I'm going to want quick step, is because... Oh, hold on. It's right there. We're going to be going to an area that you, like, never see. Uh, there's kind of a rooftop of the Yucatan. And the real final boss is going to be the zombie hallway. Um, this is why we want quick step especially, because, like I mentioned, being able to weave through these zombies is very important. And you need quick step to last here. Uh, very often, runners will actually make quick step in the uh, the German bar right on the area, but we didn't need to. All right, so right now, uh, we are going to be standing right here in this corner, and I'm going to aim up. What's going to happen is Sullivan's going to look for me, and I'm going to shoot him in the head a bunch. And he's going to say, ha, missed! Uh, and this is going to be the final boss fight. We cheese him by just standing in this corner, and he'll never be able to hit us. And he's gonna yell insults the whole time, but uh, I'm just gonna aim. I'll take about 19 shots to kill him. Uh, the second sniper rifles, just in case I miss. He'll insult me, we don't have to actually do it. So just this. Um, my PB currently, I think, is a 46 with in-game timer because we use a load list time for this. Uh, but I wanna say like real time is maybe about an hour. So this may have actually been a PB, believe it or not. Uh, I kinda wish I was running my uh, IGT, but you know what? It gives me an excuse to run it again after this, after this showcase. It's a great strat, isn't it? 
Miss! <laughs> See, you're just so happy with the mist of blood. Time will be coming up in a moment when we get the final hit. And let's see. Actually, they may come on the final cut. There it is, time. And GG. 59.31. Uh, 59.31. 51. 59.51. That may have been a PB, actually. I don't know. Because I don't know my uh, IGTI real time is that. But it, it's comparable on my uh, my VOD for the 46.11 I had. But that was good. That was a really good run, actually. Uh, if I didn't save as much, it probably would have been better. But I was... I wasn't going... I didn't even die. That's the sad part. I didn't even die. But I really hope y'all enjoyed it. We're going to watch the end of this cutscene here. Um, I really wanted to show this off for SGEQ, and I'm probably going to try applying this game again, because uh, I really like this game. It's a fun one, and I hope you enjoyed the showcase. Also, he just gets torn in half. Uh, he's half the man he used to be, and now my shadow is hanging over me. Also, Chuck just, like, kills him, and he doesn't make a pun or anything. It's kind of dark, and his legs are ripped off. And in the distance, you can hear... Bye. I was going to make a plug, but I'm going to do a real plug right now. Uh, I have been Ecdysis. I want to give big shout-outs to the Dead Rising community, especially um, one of my favorite runners, uh, Sweetola. Uh, Sweetola actually ended up getting the world record in this category, um, I think, after GDQ submissions happened. And he put a lot of work into Dead Rising, so I want to give a lot of credit there. And to the general speed, uh, Dead Rising speedrunner community. Also to Nolly Q, because uh, she helped me find, like, a weird tech I didn't know about. I was like, wait a minute, that's there? I didn't know. So it's neat. But thank you all for watching uh, not only this, but for in the Crypt. Uh, I have been Ecdysis. I'll give my plug right now. Uh, if you enjoy any horror games, I do a bunch. Watch the ending. This is the canon ending, by the way. There's more to it. So that's happening. I'll do my little plug. Um, again, I do 125 plus different horror games. I do both casual games. I very often speedrun. Uh, I'm learning a new speedrun on Sunday. I'll be learning the original Siren game, which is a really weird uh, place, uh, really weird PlayStation 2 game. Um, I'm doing uh, Shadows of the Dam, so hopefully I can learn how to speedrun that in the future. And like I said, on Friday, I'll be doing a massive Dead Rising speedrun run marathon uh this will be all bosses one two three and four it's a long stream that i do and there's a lot of cool stuff with those games that people don't really appreciate um also uh, if you want to check out any of the dead rising community we have it on spear.com we have a load of resources a lot of good ways of getting into these games so i highly recommend that if you're interested at all please do not uh, hesitate to reach out um they're fun and here's the ending katie's all nice and safe uh, Chuck has to get her backpack back. By the way, this is the actual wait, canon ending. Uh, you might be wondering, wait, what about the overtime? That's not a canon. Uh, there is an extra boss that we don't fight, which is TK. Um, but that's not canon, believe it or not. Uh, normally we just kind of do the ending A, and then if people really want to do an advanced category, they can. But I just want to mention, this is the actual ending of this game. Uh, it leads into a DLC called Case West, which, um, Frank West saves you from the sky. Oh no, I can't believe it. Chuck, use a quick step. Hold on. I don't think he's gonna do it. I don't think he's gonna do it. He's trying. So. Oh, maybe he's, wait. Poor Chuck. Anyway, with Chuck dying here, I also want to give the general outro for the show. Uh, this has been Speedruns from the Crypt. We are a bi-weekly horror hotfix. Uh, there's a lot of fun that we have, and I really do hope that you enjoy the different spooky games that we put on. I usually try to uh, compile games that go together, or games that are just pretty fun. So if you want to get just catch more horror on GDQ, every other Wednesday, uh, we will be here, uh, usually starting at 10 p.m. EST. I'm going to go to about maybe 2 a.m. or so. Um, yes, thank you all for watching. I have been your host, Dicus. I hope that you enjoyed the showcase. You can find me here on everywhere, Twitter, all that jazz. I already plugged myself. You know where it is. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful night, and please join us for a raid. All right, have a great one.